Um, I, I did notice too that uh, it was Daryl. Didn't you say you were going to bed? Wait, shut up. Hang on. I remembered what I wanted to say forever ago <laughs> about the flying mouse. So I she doesn't think... really get that excited. <laughs> Welcome back to Tangents of Creation. I am your host, Jamie Chaos, with Annie Lace, your low effort podcast, where we try to cram a bunch of tangents together to make coherent sentences in about two to three hours. <laughs> that sounds about right. I <laughs> thought you were going to say, I thought you were saying that I was the low no, effort. No, you're not the <laughs> I was about to be like, bitch, I'll smack you. <laughs> no, there's a lot of effort that goes into this show. Uh, thank you for everyone who's coming to join. And, uh, so tonight we're going to focus on the lore drops from the uh, most recent. <laughs> Thank you. It, we I think we did, nailed that intro pretty well this time. Uh, I, I I rehearsed it like a million times uh, at my drive to work and back. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I think I faltered a little bit, but it'll get better. Okay. The more you say it, that, or it, I don't know if I'm gonna say that every time though. Um, yeah. So we're gonna be doing the cosmetic swap over. Uh, we're going to talk about the lore drops in that. Uh, that's kind of how we do this on, on this channel. We don't really go into much about the actual cosmetics themselves. We kind of just like to pick out the lore that's in there. Uh, and then later on, we'll be looking at uh, talking about solo play and the MMO, um, just MMOs in general, and our thoughts and opinions on those. And then we'll move on to talking about flying in MMOs and our thoughts and opinions. I've seen a, quite a few different videos on YouTube uh, discussing those two different topics. And I feel like Annie and I, this may be a spot where Annie and I might have differing opinions. So I don't think we've had a lot of that on the show. I almost want to see if I can fly. You can keep talking. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm waiting for your feedback. For what? Of what I just <laughs> said. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. If the intro didn't fall apart, like, how long would it really be the Tangents of Creation podcast? What are you looking for? Um, I wanted to find that original post that somebody had posted about the. Flag. Oh, oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, one of the things that spawned um, the idea of uh, t discussing flying in MMOs and how they, it's a positive or negative was there was we had a comment um, on the YouTube channel, so we we figured we could address that as well. Um, I'll wait for my partner in crime over here to get her ass in gear and to be ready. I think they, I think they deleted it. No, guys, listen, if you have comments that are harsh, please leave them up. Don't, don't delete comments. If, um, even if you feel bad about them, leave them there. Uh, <laughs> trust me, it doesn't hurt our feelings. And sometimes it can, it leads to good discussion. Oh, that sucks. I, I, I brief, yeah. I kind of remember what they kind of talked about. So without further ado, uh, we can get into talking about the cosmetic swap over. So this month we had the Accord of Autumn and I'm going to just gonna throw yeah, this yeah. in. I want me to I, read it? Oh, I'll do the first one. I'll, I'll do the first one. Aww. Um, I even <laughs> made this little graphic for us guys. We're, we're, we're growing up. So I'm going to roll the slideshow and then once we get in, I'll, we'll do the, uh, which ones it's actually talking about. So you can see the artwork up there. We're growing up. We're getting production value up there. So. Oh. I meant to tell everybody who at least knew about it. I passed my exam on Thursday, so. Yes. And we can now legally sell and buy home. <laughs> yes. In Kentucky. <laughs> All right. So, as shadows grow long and days grow short, a lethargy creeps across the land, settling into Varen hearts, slowing steps and frustrating passions. The farmers of Vera reap the final vestiges of the harvest, leaving their fields fallow and their larders full in preparation for wintertide. As the inexorable darkness of the unending season cloaks the land, the anonymous members of the ancient cult, the Accord of Autumn, prepare for the mysterious Sabbath known only as the Moonless Rebel. Thought by many to be a cautionary folktale spun by parents to keep their children from straying too far from home, the Accord of Autumn is a very real religious cult, worshipping Feldegeist, a lesser demon of the void. Young and rudderless victims are lured to the motionless revel, uh, moonless revel, moonless. <laughs> by the promise of light-hearted gathering filled with revelry and debauchery, culminating in a ruckus feast served beneath the new moon at the very peak of the harvest. In truth, the purpose of the revel 
It's to gather hapless souls and prepare them as unwilling followers of the cult's blasphemous ideology. Unwitting follower. Unwitting, <laughs> whatever. I got pretty fucking close. I didn't, I'm pretty sure I didn't say um during the whole fucking thing. <laughs> so moving off of that, I'll pull this guy up here. Uh, if you want to read the Wicker Mask. Actually, I kind of want to talk about this. So I thought before we dive in, it's going to be tangent as fuck. Um, I actually, I really like these guys. I just wish they looked cooler. I, I saw their, um, their outfits and they kind of remind me of gypsies, but I, I've kind of been playing in my head and thinking about this. And I thought about it recently. So the fact that seasons are going to be one week long, th this is probably like a traveling cult that you'll probably see move into the towns, like around that, that autumn harvest. So as we're moving into fall, these, these occult, these cultists will probably be moving in and start causing some problems. So I, I, I could quests pop up because there's missing children, missing <laughs> children, void demons. I, I don't know. They sound pretty fun, man. I'm going to tell you the, the debauchery and, and all the feasting. It sounds like my type of, my type of cult. I was going to say, they wouldn't need to bribe me much. <laughs> I'd go pretty willingly. <laughs> I would like to know more too about like their, uh, blasphemous ideology. Um, I, especially to, we got a drop of Feldegeist is a lesser demon in the void. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, I, I would love to see like some artwork that goes with these guys. And also you get, you guys will have to excuse me because, uh, my, my children decided to lovingly pass me the plague. So, uh, I am trying not to <laughs> die during the street. Yeah. We've got good old sickies going through the house. <laughs> it hasn't quite hit me yet, or maybe it did. And I just held it in until I finished my exam. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you, you want, want to, take me to do the wicker mask? Yes. Yeah, the wicker mask. It looks so cool too. I love it. All right. On the afternoon before the moonless revel, uh, adherents to the cult weave wicker masks from corn, wheat, or wicker reeds. They don the masks at sundown and begin the dance of worship. The dance whips them into a state of ecstasy and causes them to shed essence, which feeds the void-born demons walking amongst them, their true visages hidden behind their own masks. The wicker masks are expressionless reductions with the features of indistinct prey animals and differ in size alone. Even across Vera, the design of these masks varies little, alluding to the idea that the making of these masks may be divinely inspired. Most scoff at this as many have woven similar masks with friends at local harvest festivals unaffiliated with the cult. Such festivals were common on Sanctus because the Varen, uh, wow, <laughs> ex, <laughs> it's late guys, ex patriarchs <laughs> carried their folk tales with them to the mundane world, but of course no demons were involved. During the harvest season, it is difficult to identify who is an accord of autumn cultist or a neophyte and who is simply a party-goer, prankster, or uh, innocuous youth because of the prevalence of wicker masks donned at less malvalent festivals. Um, so Nuclear Tango <laughs> brought up that uh, these guys don't look like cultists. And that's kind of like where I felt too. I felt like the, the outfits really did make them seem more like traveling gypsies. And um, I was like, man, I want these guys to look a bit more menacing. But I think that's all part of their thing, right? Is that they want to kind of be under the radar. Yeah, well, it says they, yeah, they like blend in because they put on the mask, but everybody else wears the mask too. <laughs> but yeah, they, I do think the outfit itself should look a little more menacing. Yeah. So, in way or form. So they're kind of trying to trick people into like they'll, they'll have all these autumn fests and everything. They're wearing these wicker masks. And you can hear they get people dancing in a friend frenzy, which starts shedding the essence, which starts making, uh, feeding the void demons around them. Demons. <laughs> so I could actually see that being like an event. You, you, you know, you're walking through the woods or something. You see this like, you know, these group of people and they're, they're dancing. And obviously you're coming across that, you would think that's not super menacing, but all of a sudden, you know, maybe you start noticing like, oh, there's essence shedding and then you start noticing some shadows starting to form. And then all of a sudden you see these demons start to pop. I, I definitely could see this being like a, a dynamic event and you start seeing all those things happen. I, I think there's actually a lot of cool, there's so many cool things with the cosmetic stuff that I hadn't read before because I, I, when I first started, I was like, oh, it's just cosmetic pack. And then later on, once I started realizing that we were actually getting lore drops with this and we were seeing like assets of the game and PCs, um, I started realizing like, man, I need to actually go back and read because these are very lore heavy. There's so much in this. 
Yeah, I know. We still <laughs> we keep saying we're going to go back and read it. We just haven't had time. <laughs> which, which is why we, when we do actually address this on the podcast and we talk about it, we really try not to actually talk about the cosmetics in general. Like you can see there's a wicker mask. That's cool. You guys like it. You don't, whatever. Don't care. What we want to focus on is the lore that comes with it. So we will move. I will read the next one. Oh, unless you want to read the one about the, uh, the pet. I know you're all about pets. Yeah. All right. The umbral fetch. This one sounds really cool. I want it. <laughs> Hardly more than a swatch of void stuff animated. Wow. <laughs> void stuff animated by a bit of precious essence. The umbral fetch is arguably nothing more than a struggling shade aspiring to life on the material plane. When an umbral fetch is seen, it usually attempts to take the shape of a common animal like a cat, a rabbit, or an oversized spider. But the fetch can only hold a cohesive shape for a short period of time before falling back into a formless cloud. Since the material plane and the void have no common borders, an umbral fetch can only travel to the mortal realm by hitching a ride on an entity being pulled there by a summoning ritual or dark magic spell. They can also be pulled across the veil in the magical eddies trailing in the wake of the harbinger or in the crossing of an arch demon, demon or greater demon. They linger on the material plane for as long as possible by consuming scraps of fervor and strong emotion. Some shidim keep these little aberrations as pets as to um, vibrant void and shadow mages. If you have been trained to do simple tasks but the ephemeral spirits are more are more <laughs> often taken on for their aesthetic. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> um, I think it's so cool that it just like it tries to hold a shape, and if this is your pet, it just like poofs every once in a while. <laughs> I know that's kind of cool. I, I kind of hope that when you when they drop this pet, it doesn't just stay the three eyed cat. Like I would like it to see like it it start to lose its shape, and then take like the form of the oversized spider. It start to lose its shape, takes another form. I think that'd be really cool, a really cool pet. Um, Lord also just uh, subscribed again for three months. Fun. Awesome. So thank you so much, Lord. <laughs> really appreciate that. Guys, it means the world to us. It really does. Um, so thank you for being here. Also, I saw Daryl in the chat. Welcome back. Uh, it, it's, so, it's so good having, like, having everyone here, especially like, once we dive deeper in the discussion and everyone can like, uh, talk about their, their opinions and thoughts too. It really helps drive the podcast. So we figured we would have an appetizer by looking into the, all this lore. I thought these guys are pretty cool. I like these little pets. Um, I would like to see. Yeah, I love the kitty. I really want to see them animated. Like I want to know if it, if if this pet actually stays a cat or or if it if it doesn't like uh, the NPCs or or if, sorry if it does as the cosmetic stays a cat if the NPCs are gonna um, like change form and stuff. I don't know. I think I think they might just go the extra mile make it so it shapes between the common animals so it says cat rabbit and oversized spider and then like between when it's in those shapes it's just like a formless cloud <laughs> it would be very cool i would love to see that i think that could be animated very very coolly yeah um, also another thing too is i'm actually curious what color they're going to use for the eyes because i'm pretty sure the cosmetic has the variant of the blue ones so i'm i'm hoping they have red i think they would, it would go pretty cool because i was looking at oh, uh, the wicker mask too like I want to know, or if it's purple. I love for, for like corruption and evil magic. I always love the color purple. I think it looks really cool. All right. So next we have uh, da, 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 da. a wax wool ew. Ew. The ew. I took me. Well, I'd actually looked this one up. How to pronounce it? Or you? Is it a you? I, I looked it up. Yeah, I thought it was a. Well, thought it was a you. <laughs> no you. No you. No you. No <laughs> you. Oh, okay, we can stop that. Uh, <laughs> All right, you want me to read this one too? <laughs> I got it. Um, scores of wax wool you were a common sight in the Riverlands. That's another drop there, guys. We'll probably see these guys in the Riverlands. That's why I like reading this stuff because you can pick out all these pizzas. Uh, before the harbinger of uh, before the harbinger of the apocalypse, in the present day, only a few herds remain. These were brought through the divine gateways by their owners upon their return from Sanctus. Of the wax wool variety, the ewes are stronger Ewes. and you to the use <laughs> are stronger and less temperamental and thus the best choice for riding or hauling the animals nourishing milk docile demeanor and quality wool made them invaluable to the settlers of sanctus so their eventual reintroduction to vera seemed inevitable these oversized good-natured 
dre beasts are nearly impervious to rapid changes in climate, and their many overlapping layers of thick, oily wool will protect them from the heaviest precipitation. Males and females both sport wide, curled horns coiled at the side of their head. They trudgingly, they trudge tirelessly on their splitting or split hooves, which are hard and steely enough to spark when they strike the cobbles of the road. Ooh, wax wool shepherds or aspire <laughs> wax wool shepherds often braid ornaments in bead the ropey black wool of this rare breed to keep it out of their red watery eyes see this one has blue eyes so they are going to go with red for those other colors oh um, yeah look at that keep it out of their red uh watery eyes and ink black faces without such treatment one wonders how a wax wool you can see it all it kind of makes me wonder so say if you're do you come across these in the wild? So you're in the riverlands and, and there's some that are actually wild ones. <laughs> if they don't have the braids, does that mean when they do a charge, they kind of do a blind, a blind charge towards you? I feel like they're just going to look like what a sheep would look like. You know, you've seen those videos, right? Where like a sheep. Oh yeah. When it gets a like, long time and then they find it and the poor thing is like a mess. It's all matted. <laughs> yeah, they, I didn't, I didn't realize looking close at it, that it has all the braids in its fur. Yeah. I see that too pretty cool um so these guys definitely sound like they're going to be really decent for uh traveling they're going to be good for any type of weather effects it sounds like they don't really get bogged down by that it, especially for i would assume that i think later on you'll see they can be attached to caravans so that's something to think about too is how different animals pulling different carts or being mounted and, and how those are actually going to affect as you traverse through the lands i i really would love to see and this is coming from the survival game side of me to have a lot of those survival elements in um ashes of creation so like you know temperature maybe not having to eat or drink that's one of the things i hate about survival games i just <laughs> i don't like the upkeep on it uh, but i would like to see like having to pay attention to seasons and what your armor does if it gives you buffs debuffs and then having to have a certain rotational armor for different things like that and we got to stretch. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, that always feels so good. Though. It really does. <laughs> Especially, oh, I was going to say, kind of on the survival topic, um, a thought that popped into my head is I know they have like the farming. And this one talked about how they have like milk. So they use them for milk. Do, you, do we know if we're going to be able to use mounts for like um, animal products like milk? Uh, you have steep wool. Yeah, because you'll sort of thing. You'll be able to use them as um, uh, livestock. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I haven't really looked at like the farming profession. So, yeah, so you, you will be able to because it looks like you can also cultivate the wool. You'll be able to cultivate the milk. Um, I think there was another. What was the? I thought there was a couple different things. Where we see back there. Where do we go? Okay, never mind. Looks like it was just the. Oh, and they're very docile, so they seem like they're nice. So yeah, they're nourishing milk, <laughs> docile demeanor, and quality uh, wool. Jesus, words are difficult sometimes. All right, so moving on, we can actually see what the cultists will be dressed as. And like I said, I think the blue is probably this variant for the cosmetics. But I think in the game, those probably blues will be red. red. Yeah. Oh man, we should like maybe color correct these for next time. <laughs> Uh, if, if we can get, get a hint of like what the colors are actually going to be, because I think that'd be really cool to actually see like what the NPCs may look like in the world. So I'll take this one. Awesome. Do you want, it's, it's fine. If you want, you want okay. it? Okay. You could read it. The autumn collar. Though these were once fine clothes suited to the markets or the theater, they've been worn through and patched numerous times over trackless week, trackless weeks on the road. No matter where their journey bega uh, began, traveling members of the Accord of Autumn seem to inevitably end up wearing a motley collection of patched and belted scraps. This contributes in a large part to the innocuous and deceptively carefree demeanor of the traveling demon worshippers of the cult. Well, that was a short one. Dude, <laughs> Daryl says it looks boring. That's kind of how I felt. Like, these guys sound so badass. And then you, like, kind of see their outfits, and I'm like, uh... Like, I, yeah, <laughs> but I get it because they're, they're trying to be kind of low key. They're low key, like cultists They're you know, they're, they're not trying to be like right in your face of, Hey guys, we worship demons. Um, 
it, but but yeah like i would like to see and, and then we don't know too like what are the demons are with them look like are these guys going to be able to summon demons are these a group of summoners i think i think as far as like the npcs being dressed this way i think it's suitable and fine but i feel like for a cosmetic pack that people are paying for i think most people would want to see a little more i think it depends because some people <laughs> Like, like, like Daryl's saying, they don't really look like cultists and they look more like merchants. And that's the thing though. Some people want to RP as merchants. So this could be right up some people's alleys. Not everyone wants to have like badass looking armor. Some people do want uh -huh. to, you know, have well, their. It doesn't need to well, be like crazy armor. Well, well the thing, <clears throat> excuse me. The thing is too, you got to remember it, like it's a costume. So you could just throw this on during the autumn parties. You could find the cultists in the wood. You can dress up as them, role play, throw your wicker mask on, have a good time. That is true. I want the wicker mask. I like the mask. Get drunk, slay some virgins, you know, I don't know, whatever demon worshippers do. <laughs> um, yeah, the wicker mask is actually pretty cool. Let's see. I like everyone with badass armor. I don't know. Not everyone does. Some people, that's one of the cool things about, about Ashes is someone might just want to role play someone as a merchant. They might see that's one of the things too. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this, so don't quote me, but I believe the, this costume will go over your armor. So I could imagine someone going to travel with their cart and they've got like, you know, whatever the highest, highest tier armor is, they've got this thing on. So you just gotta look at them like, I could take them. Turns out, no, you can't. <laughs> kind of. I think it needs to be like, I mean, yeah, highest tier, but I think it would still need to be the same material. So cloth. No, uh, I, I don't know how the costumes exactly are going to work because I, I kind of feel like that too. Like. The, well, because it's the same way for the mounts, is you get to put that costume on an existing mount of the same type. Yeah, that's true. I think that's more true for the the cosmetic pieces and not the actual costumes. I, I think there's still, there's still like... I know, there's still so much mystery. <laughs> there is a lot of mystery behind when we can use certain things and when we can't. But uh, yeah, so that was that for the cosmetic skin. It was very short and sweet. Um, <laughs> just and like the outfit, have, there's not too much going on there. And then for the caravan, we have the calling cart. The so called calling cart of the Accord of Autumn are purpose built for the task of roving the countryside, gathering members. They sport a smooth ride on oversized iron leaf springs, and their spindly steel wheels easily withstand the miles of jostling road and the jerky and uneven gait of the snuffling wax will use that pull them. The carts. Billowing covers are as patched and colorful as the raiment of those who ride in them, and they are often be uh, bedecked with flags, chimes, bells, and other noisemakers to herald their arrival. Country dwellers have, so have come to associate the sound of these jangling bells with the cult's arrival on their annual sojourn across Vera. Yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely sticks to that motif. And I, I think it is also, yeah, you'll hear them or you see them. Yeah. That's the cult. That's the cult's <laughs> cart. So you'll hear like this kind of jingle and, and stuff. They'll, they'll have a, they'll have a noise as they're coming towards you. It looks pretty cozy. That's the thing though, right? Isn't that what they're trying to do? They're trying to entice you. You know, it's autumn. You're saying, Hey guys, we've got, you know, some spice ciders and we've you know, we, sounds we got meat pies. <laughs> it's, you know, we got music. It's going to be a great time. Everyone's going to get drunk. We're going to have some debauchery. We're going to raise some demons and take your souls. Ignore the last part. <laughs> right. They're trying to indoctrinate you. So they are trying to be low key about it. Like they're not trying to like, you know, have it right in your face that, <laughs> that they're, they're going to try to, uh, make you part of their cult. Daryl says he's going to spend all the time at sea. <laughs> I'm sure there's pirate, pirate cults. Oh, probably. Uh, right. I mean, cult of chaos. That is true. They're, the cult <laughs> of chaos will be will be raising raising uh, raising some hell on the oceans. So is the cult of chaos going to be on the sea, Legion of Lace, on land? <laughs> oh, it could be Legion of Lace, Le land. Yeah. Legion of Lace on land, cult of chaos on the sea. Um, Lord says that he's easily swayed as well, so he may also be on the. He's also going to be on the sea. And now we can't be losing you the cookies. I'm like, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> That debauchery though, it sounds pretty good. It does. The debauchery sounds pretty fun. I want to, dude, I want to know if there's like other cults because <laughs> this should be fun. You need like one, like that's like right in your face though, about like them being cult members. All right. We need one that can be our cult. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Which one can I join? Um, hearth upon the, the heath. Uh, what did I say? Hearth. Hearth? Hearth. It's hearth. Is it hearth? You guys say hearth or hearth? No, it's hearth, like hearthstone. 
Hearthstone. I was saying it wrong. What is it? Hearth? <laughs> yeah, hearth. It's pronounced, it's spelled like hearth. I hate this fucking it is word. Definitely not hearth. Yeah, hearth. Technically, it would right. be, technically it'd be hearth. Oh, great. <laughs> so it's hearth. Everyone's calling me out. So hearth upon, no. <laughs> All right. Just get rid of the E. It doesn't need to be there. Oh, my God. Hearth upon the heath. See, that doesn't make sense because there's, whatever. I'm not even going to get into it. It's hard. <laughs> what, what is the last word? Is it half? No. Heath. No, heath. I know. Look at the spelling. Whatever. Like a like a heath bar. <laughs> I know. I'm just getting upset. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hearth upon the heath. English, English is hard. It's stupid. <laughs> When inclement weather demands it, a yurt is the ideal shelter for a band traveling through grasslands. So again, I think we're going to see these guys in the riverlands or grassland, like grassy areas. I don't think we're going to see them in deserts or things like that. Uh, the round footprint uh, affords ample space for travelers to spread out and share the warmth of the central fire. Ease of setup and breakdown allows travelers to pick up and leave as readily as they settled in on the previous night. Roadwise, care Caravaneers have some <laughs> caravaneers have come to recognize the small clusters of yurts uh, favored by the accord of autumn. These temporary shelters are festooned with small flags, bells, and wind chimes. Unless the caravaneer caravaneers caravaneers <laughs> seek a free meal and the gentle sermon sure to be included with it, they give a, the cult a wide berth. <laughs> so I'm saying, L Lord's going to be taken in by that free meal, man. We're going to lose him. We got to make sure okay, he stays around the ocean. We'll look out for you. I like free food I do, too. I do really like the name, the Accord of Autumn. I like it too. I think it's pretty cool. I feel like we're going to have to do like a, a an episode where you <laughs> swear allegiance to me. Sweet. Cult of Chaos will reign. Um, <laughs> so I think what we should do at some point is like, we should even like a weekly segment aside from this, we'll all just kind of get together and we'll read all the other juicy lore drops. Cause I then we have like, what, how many years of this where I wasn't paying attention to the, like the drops. I don't even think I've read the ones that were on the pack I bought. We need to get better at reading first before. That's true, <laughs> but we'll get better. <laughs> Whatever. I'll edit it in post. You guys can just watch us struggle. Words are difficult. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I'm already Especially thinking of the next word. But that's part of the fun. The agents shall follow. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I think that wraps up all that. Um, so it sounds like their yurts are very similar to their caravans uh, in, in that they make a lot of noise and they seem very cozy and comfy. Which probably why it's called the Accord of Autumn because they have a lot of sounds. <laughs> which, which is nice because if you do think of Autumn, like you like that idea of being warm and cozy and, you know, having, having full bellies, especially as the weather's starting to get cold. Those bastards, they, they figure out the right time of year to try to get cult members. And it's like everyone's winding down, ready to, you know. They're like, yo, come, come dance with us and we'll feed you. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine if you start shedding essence in those. Now those demons ignore them. Now they're they're always here. Now nah, it's normal. I want to know what that looks like when they start shedding the essence. Hold on a second. What does what does the essence look like? What was that? Me dying of the plague that the kids gave me. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Excuse me. Okay. I don't think he's good. I'm not. I'm not that great. <laughs> The, uh, I can feel it setting in. So the kids have some type of cold, head cold, and I'm, it's definitely starting to start to hit me. But we're gonna we're gonna make it through this. <laughs> All right. So moving on, I think we're gonna get into the first discussion of tonight. So I'm just gonna throw up. I need to make some actual B roll to put on the back of this. I'm just gonna throw up. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw up. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's not what I was trying to say. Cut off. Cut off at the wrong time. <laughs> So I'm going to put this guy up here and we're just going to let that roll in the background. It has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about tonight, but I figured that it would be a nice, uh, you don't need it. Luke. You don't need to see it. I don't need to share it to you. Share your screen. I don't need to share you. the screen to you. It's just, it's whatever. Hold on. Annie oh, wants here. me to slow I'll down <laughs> and needs me to slow down. The, oh, did you guys see all the pictures that Annie was sent me where she was making weird faces? At the <laughs> oh, stop it. I'm going to post those <laughs> later. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wait, did they pop up on stream? Yeah, they popped up because I was uh, trying to get to here. There we go. So everyone can see you <laughs> making some faces. <laughs> They'll That's be up great. on Twitter later. All right. So we have this going in the background. So the first discussion that we're going to kind of have quick, <laughs> let's get a bucket. I'm not going to throw, I'm going to be fine. 
uh, it's, it's just hitting me a little bit now. I, uh, I'll be fine. Hopefully by this weekend, it'll be done. Uh, we, <laughs> we've been getting, it's been a long time since we actually got sick by the kids. And uh, this is the first one in quite a while. So I'm hoping it won't be as brutal as the last ones, but it's more of a head cold. Really, and stuff, but... I hate to break it to you, but we're already at the weekend. Yeah, I know. So hopefully by Monday, I feel better. <laughs> you said by the weekend. <laughs> no, I meant after week. You know what I meant. Uh, so we are going to discuss uh, solo play in MMOs. And I'm trying to think of how I actually want to go into talking about this. So for me, I view MMOs based off of the massive multiplayer RPG, right? So, so for me, I want to have content that involves multiple people. When I think of an MMO, I kind of think about it in terms of playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like I want to have a party. I want things to do. And then if I don't have a lot to do, then I want to have some, some downtime, but I really do want that the core of the game to be built around playing with other people because some of my fondest memories of like playing uh, vanilla wow was having to build parties and, and, and take time to get to know people, make friends. And then those friends later became friends in real life. And with the current iteration of MMOs, I really feel like they're just online role-playing games. Like that's it. They're just online role-playing games where you have where it ends. right. Where you just have it's, it's multiplayer if you want it to be, but there's a lot of stuff you can do without having to group. And I. Yeah, so we, we can go from there um, if you want to discuss how any of your feelings on that. I was distracted. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to pull something up for later. <laughs> Pay attention now. I had a thought, and you know how my thoughts are. If I don't act on them, they go away. <laughs> <laughs> so is it for the stream or is it something completely off topic? It was for the stream, but okay, I is it when it, it or you asked me a question. When it, is it when it comes to flying? Uh, no, it was okay. something different. That's something completely different. Okay. So Annie, how do you feel? What, what, what to you would be a good ratio of solo gameplay to group gameplay? So I think at least from how they've made it sound, I think Ashes is going to be doing a pretty good mix. Um, <laughs> I tend to be a pretty independent player when I play an MMO other than playing like with Jamie. Um, but I do really enjoy like the friendships that come from it. Like I think some of our best times in MMOs is when we've had like a really robust guild with lots of members and like lots of people to talk to and do things with. Um, but I don't want it to be like a requirement to always need people for everything. So for me, I think a happy medium is good. So like if you only have like an hour or two to log on and do some, you know, play for a bit like I think you should be able to have that option without needing to spend like a half hour to an hour trying to find a group to go with you to do things like I think there still needs to be that kind of content that you can do by yourself <laughs> and still have a, a good time um, but if you want to play for longer and take that time to find a group then like I really want that content to be part <laughs> of it too <laughs> So for you, what do you think a good percentage of solo, solo content to multiplayer content would be? I would say like 35, so 35% solo and like 65% um, group. Oh, so we're, we're actually, okay. We're actually have a lot more in common on this than I thought we did. Um, Maybe 40, 60. <laughs> that's kind of where, where I was landing because I, as a, um, yeah, as someone who permanently has someone to play with, uh, when we do, yeah, okay, so 4060, it seems like a lot of people, uh, or Dilly's Daryl in the chat is with us on the 4060. Um, Ninja Worm was saying, as an EverQuest veteran, I also really like there being more of a social aspect. I think grouping should be the optimal way to play, but I do like there, uh, I do like there to be some solo content available when I can't find a group, or I just feel like doing my own thing, which I feel like that's, right, or exactly, that's a pretty good yeah. sentiment. <laughs> So, okay. It seems like a lot of people are in agreement of this. Uh, that for myself, I really enjoy doing raids in dungeons. I think in MMOs, those are my favorite things to do. So a lot of times I do like doing group heavy content 
Uh, and when I'm questing too, I have a permanent questing partner. So I always have someone to play with because I'm playing with Annie. And the only times where <laughs> I need something to do by myself tends to be when I'm just hopping on and I just feel like playing for like an hour or so. So I, I definitely agree that I think there should be something that gives people who have a limited amount of time something to do so you can still progress. But I think the most optimal way for playing should be doing things with a group, needing a party for, for most things. I love when there are quests that require more than two people. Uh, you, you used to have in WoW, you'd have quests for taking out world bosses that would require you to have like five people in a group or, or you'd have some, you didn't want to be a world boss, it'd just be a hard quest. And you, now we, we've had those where they recommend, you know, you have three people, but you and I can just do it by ourse ourselves. I don't know if it's a difference yeah. because you have a, because you know, you play, well, one, you either play a druid or you play a ranger. So those are some pretty OP ones. I usually, yeah, I usually play some very easily independent classes. So the ranger, like I can either use my pet to heal or my pet to tank or the druid where I'm very like self-reliant and can either tank myself or heal myself or all of them and do DPS. So that's kind of the way I play. I like to be prepared for any situation. <laughs> So, and with, with that in mind of having the classes that can do everything, they can kind of keep to themselves, be self-contained, self-heals, uh, tanking damage on uh, kind of like on the fly when they want to switch to that. And, uh, Ash is probably not having a class that's going to be able to do that. You may need to find people to take on those harder challenges. It may not be as viable to play solo, at least in some areas. Uh, it, one of the things I've, I've seen people talking about is that they feel like without having the majority of gameplay as solo, the Ashes of Creation won't survive. And for me, I don't think that's true. It, it, it comes along that idea, right, of, of implementing a Dungeon Finder. A lot of people, like myself, I actually don't really like Dungeon Finders. I don't like the type of uh, game environment that that creates. I think it creates a lot of toxicity. It doesn't allow people to be taught how to do their class or there's not a lot of like empathy towards someone who's struggling. Whereas if you have to actually make a group, you find a dungeon, you get there together, you spent now 20 minutes getting this whole thing together and you go in there, you're going to invest in that person. You're going to teach them like, Hey, maybe you're struggling with this. Maybe you need to learn how to do this. You're actually going to teach them something where the current thing now is just, it, they're a throwaway person. You get in there, they suck, kick them, you're gone. So I don't really like dungeon finders, but I use them. And this is where I was going back with. It's like that idea, right? Of if there was something where in the game that you know will ruin the game for you. For me, it's XP boost. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Elder Scrolls Online has a lot of XP boost. I knew going into that, that it would ruin the game for me if I did that, because I knew it would kill my want to explore and do questing. I knew I could just pop those XP boosts and just keep doing dungeons over and over and over. And that's what I did. But I knew going into that, that it would ruin the game for me and that I wouldn't want to play it. But there's a thing, the system is in there. So it was going to use it and we can say, well, we'll just don't use it. It's like the idea. If I tell you guys, Hey, you press this button, I'm stealing this from Asmongold, but it's, it's, I, there's actually was a study <laughs> about this. Say, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he brought this up. There's actually another study and I don't know how to get in that one, but uh, if there was a button in there, right, that gave every player a million gold and you knew it would destroy the economy, would you press it? Of course you would. Everybody would. Because you'd go, well, not everyone's going to press it. I'll press it. And that's the thing. You're going to destroy the game. So I, not I, even that. It's not even. It's not even the. Oh, some people won't. It's just greed gets the best of people or convenience. And right. That's just how it is. <laughs> whether whether you're a greedy person or not, like we're all human. So, like, yeah, if you had opted to that button, I can bet ninety five percent of the people who have it would click it. So right, and I I don't think that this just lends itself to the conversation of. So yeah, I don't need it. Daryl says you don't even need to ask. He already pressed it. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing, also right? Also, it goes through being competitive too. Because right. And if you want to be You don't want to get left behind. It's the same thing with like pay to win mobile games. Like you can only go so far without paying before it's just a like really annoying grind. And if you want to be in competitive, it really any pay to win game, you have to pay. Right. So who's this beast in the black <laughs> muscle here? Oh, thank you, Vladis. Oh, 
I know I've been, I've been starting to put the hours back in the gym. Thank you. Thank you for nosing. That's, that's my beast. <laughs> um, that just fucking got me so off track. What was I? Uh, <laughs> money buttons. Okay. Money <laughs> buttons. Um, different money buttons. Let's see the results. Uh, oh, she's always pleased. Um, God damn it. Hold on a second. What was, I was, I'm losing my thought. Uh, anyway, I think, I don't think it's so much this, um, cause I kind of feel like I moved the conversation away from, uh, solo gameplay into the, the systems. Okay. So I know how I'm trying to link all this together. So when you have all these things that cater towards that solo playing mind, right. Of it, it's a convenience. I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to do this, that you end up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, you end up taking away a lot of the experience that, God damn it, you guys. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, you, uh, I can't word this right now. So they, it does destroy the experience, right? You're, you're going to end up, as much as like it's nice to give those people who only have a few hours uh, of, a way to experience more content, I feel like that ends up derailing the game a lot, just like how you guys are derailing the goddamn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the point of this podcast, but it's a fair though, point. let's be honest <laughs> I know oh, would it I really be a say, chance to creation if we weren't getting derailed um, I was going to say earlier about um, when we were talking about solo content and how certain people would want to see MMOs be pretty much mostly solo content and for me like I said I tend to be an independent player and I play classes that are really self-reliant so I don't really need to rely on other people in most situations. However, after playing a game alone for a while, I get bored. Yes. And I think the biggest thing for me that keeps me interested in a game is the people that I get to spend my time with when I'm in a game. So like if I'm playing a game that Jamie's not really interested in and I'm playing it by myself, like I'll, I'll have some fun with it until like I kind of suck the dopamine out of it and then after that it's kind of like oh well like you know the game's still fun I'm just kind of bored of being by myself in the game the whole time like I want people to share it with and like you have that in most MMOs but I feel like it's harder to get connected to people because everybody's just like disposable for the most part when it, when it comes right. to like raids and dungeons and in like and I think viewing people as disposable ends up adding this, the, this toxicity an unintentional toxicity to the game where it's get good son, like just kick them out. And, and, and you, you know, you don't try to help people learn their classes or rotation or, or any of those things. you you just want to clear the, clear everything as fast as possible. You want to get onto the next thing. And I hate that, that loop. Right. And the thing is I do it. I, I am guilty of it too. I'm not going on WoW, going to Orgrimmar, looking for people to, to, you know, do dungeons with. I'm not trying to, like, we've been back for a little bit. I, we haven't played for a little while. I, I think we kind of fell off again. But we, we, you know, we tried to play again. But, like, I'm not going to go hang out like I used to when, when I played vanilla, where I would spend 15, 20 minutes, you know, messaging every person, looking at, inspecting them. Okay, that's a healer. Hey, do you want to go do this? Hey, do you want to go do this? And, you know, th them being like, yeah, okay, okay, let's do it. Like, I'm not going to do that because there's a system in there that circumvents that. But the thing is, how many connections am I missing? How many friendships am I missing? Because it's just, I, people are viewed as disposable. Now you're just a, you're a body to be there so I can play this game and I don't even have to talk to you. And, and like, I've got so used to not talking to anyone in, in the game. I did when I first came back, I was trying to talk to everybody. No one wants to say shit. Um, <laughs> but there's I was time. Say, I leveled, I leveled two characters from 40 to 60 and didn't have a conversation with anybody other than like, oops, sorry, didn't mean to pull that or something like that, you know? like right. Or like having to tell a hunter, like, hey, do you, do you still have aggro on there? Are you still tanking with the, oh yeah, can you turn that off? Thank you. Right, it's like MMO small talk, essentially. <laughs> right, <laughs> <That> like, <is. laughs> and it's a shame because I remember my first experience playing MMOs and having to spend that time and, and also having to go to the dungeon, you'd have peop two people go, you, you get to the zone, you start summoning everyone in and it was a ton of fun. Like, and I do miss that so much. It's just so hard to even get people to want to do that when you give everyone so much convenience. And I'm what I, so where I'm going with this, with, with the solo gameplay, uh, in, in MMO is that I really don't 
want to see Ashes catering to the solo gameplay experience. Because uh, I, I've seen some people calling like, hey, I think your game's going to fail if it doesn't have that. And that's the thing is that I don't think there's going to be, there's not, this game is being designed for a certain type of people in mind. And I think Steven understands that as well. But, it, but you do look at games like, say, New World, now that New World has a dungeon finder that they're, they're putting in there, they're seeing a lot more player base. So it, it is a like, weird thing as from a business perspective of making it MMO more solo friendly does open up more people that are going to play. But the question is, are those going to be loyal long-term MMO players? And that's the type of game that I haven't really seen. And something that's actually been kind of exciting for me, we, we kind of looked at Mortal Online 2. And as much as like, it seems like the game is very unpolished and kind of broken, I can't stop thinking about that because I'm like, man, I'd have to have a group because I will get messed up if I don't. I could lose all my stuff. Like you're better off with people. And I think that game is probably too um, punishing from what I actually want to play because I don't have, you know, as much as, I would want to play, be able to sit down and play. I don't have as much time as I used to, where I feel like Ashes is going to be that game where it kind of, I have enough time to actually progress and, and, and put into that. Right. Uh, God, I, I had a thought. I lost that thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, so I really don't want to see, I, like I said, it seemed like we were, everyone was pretty on board where that was at the, the 40-60 so 40% solo content, 60% group content. I feel like they have a heavier bias towards group content and to have a, a wide berth or wide variety of group content because nothing sucks more than when you do do all the group content, you've done all the raids, you've done all the dungeons and you're done. So they do have to find some way to make sure that there is enough group content to want to keep coming back to do the group things. And then having that solo stuff when one, you either don't have time to play with other people or you just don't feel like playing with other people. And uh, for me personally, even though I'm a social butterfly online, I don't really like to socialize all that much uh, all the time. Sometimes I need a, a bit of a break and sometimes I need to just, I want to just kind of jump online, listen to some music, play, play a game and then jump off. Um, unless I play with Annie. So it is a weird spot because I always have someone to play with. So I can, under, I can understand too, like if you don't have someone to play with, obviously you want to experience that game with other, um, you know, experience the game that so many other people are playing, but experience it on your terms, which I think would be really interesting if we did see a rise of online role-playing games where the, the, it is based on, like it's just Skyrim, but people are running around. And the difference would be it's more solo focused. And, but the thing is we don't have so many games like that. You have Guild Wars 2 that's like that. You have ESO that seems like it's like that, where a lot of the group stuff is tacked on. And you feel the tacked onness to those things. It just doesn't feel like it's designed with a group in mind. Right. Well, even the way uh, World of Warcraft changed, like we would be questing together in a group, and then there'd be often enough that it was like getting frustrated. It's very frustrating. Where we would phase, like one of us would phase, or both of us separately would phase into like a different zone and during a boss fight we had to do it like by ourselves and it's like why are we even in a group if we have to do like half the quests by ourselves <laughs> right it would, it would be very very frustrating because we'd be in the game we'd be playing with each other and then all of a sudden it's like where did you go it's like oh, i'm in a different phase why why did that just happen it, it was so frustrating and it seemed like it, they added that in for shadows uh, shadowlands because we were playing together um trying to get the uh those allied races or whatever. And we never had, I don't remember that happening. Maybe it happens like once or twice where yeah, we had our own. Once in a while. But yeah, in Shadowlands, it was like all the time. It was like anytime there was like a weird cutscene or something, but we'd be on the same quest at the same time. And then there would be t other times where it'd be like, are you ready to proceed or whatever with so-and-so? And then they would come with you, but huh, it's annoying. I don't like that at all because it makes it feel like it's just supposed to be done solo. And I did see the argument for so that, that case, right, is that you, you are playing along and Annie and I have certain characters we don't touch unless we're both playing. So that way we're staying together in certain things. And then we have other characters. She has other characters. I typically have time to play one. Um, <laughs> she has other ones that she'll jump on and level. So that way we can stay, you know, together. And one of the arguments was, 
you know, if you're not able to get on that day, your friend gets on, then next thing you know, you've got this five little gap between you. And it's not very fun to go back, do the stuff with your buddy or whatever. So that ends up making questing a bit more of that solo experience. And I think when it comes to questing, I'm okay with most quests being a solo experience, but also having harder quests that re make you need to go and find a group. Yeah, I agree. But another thing too is like, I, that there also seems to be another thing too, between people wanting a story heavy game or people that kind of want to explore and learn bits of lore. And I kind of fall in that camp where I like to learn things as I'm going. I like to find, you know, the books and kind of skim through those and, and learn things that way. Having a cut scene here and there is nice. Uh, for me personally, I feel like there's way too much exposition in Shadowlands. There's just, it's so story heavy. And I think this is a, a place where you and I could probably disagree because I know that you kind of like the Shadowlands story. And um, I was like, skip, <laughs> skip. Like, I, I just want to get back into it. I mean, when, I, I don't know, I like, I enjoy questing. So, like, there is times when I just kind of want to speed through it. But usually the first time I'm playing through something, like, I'll briefly, like, glance through the quests that I'm getting get it in and uh, actually watch the cutscenes and listen to the dialogues and stuff. Like, I like to know what's going on and why I'm... <laughs> I always say I'm big on knowing the why or wanting to know the why behind things. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, if something doesn't make sense, like, I'm like, I need to know why, why this is this way. So it will make sense to me. But, um, yeah, so it's the same thing in questing is I want to know why I need to go kill, like, 10 giraffes or something. <laughs> like, what do you need this for? But see, that's the thing. You get the little bit of quest, like, you know, text there and they kind of tell you. Um, I, I do think we, we were playing a little bit of, um, Wrath of Lich King classic. And I remember you getting very frustrated of like watching the text scroll and, and not being able to skip it where I, I agree. I think, um, that's a bit frustrating, but I do feel like you should have to kind of read. That's one thing I kind of miss too with, um, questing is having to read the quest to understand things. I, I rarely, if ever now read a quest until I realize, oh, there was an item that I got that I'm supposed to press to be able to do this. And again, it's just because I'm able to blow th through things and ignore them and not have to learn anything. So I would like to, I would like it to, one of the things I'm hoping that Ashes does is slows down the pace of questing and makes you have to think. I, I really think the the more struggle that's involved, the more you tend to feel more accomplished. So the harder something is, the, the more reward there that you feel like you get when you actually complete something rather than the completion just coming in like sparkly as of, yeah, you did it. Yeah, you did it. Like after a while, that just gets old. I don't give a shit anymore. Like challenge for me is what, is what makes a game really exciting. Uh, it's funny because, um, when I'm questing alone, I quest much slower. I read through things, but when I'm questing with you, like I kind of have to go fast and I kind of hate it to be honest. <laughs> so you just tell me to slow down. It's so speedy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say to, oh, wait, the thought's disappearing. Where did it go? Oh, about the scrolling text. Um, the reason I don't like the way that it was on Lich Wrath of the Lich King, where like each word pops up one at a time as it's going, um, is like I've mentioned on other streams, my reading comprehension can sometimes not be the best. So it's very distracting for me when I'm trying to read with it. And then like my eye keeps getting drawn to where the next word is popping up. And it, I think sometimes makes me have to read faster than my normal reading speed <laughs> so that I start feeling stressed out and I hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if it, if it just had like the text and then you needed to, you needed to actually manually scroll down to read, I think that would be better. Uh, I, I would like to see, I know there was, there was, there was a showcase where Steven was, show, they were showing off some, some quests or whatever. And Steven's just like, skip, skip. And then I forget someone, someone called him out on it. He's like, oh yeah. So I, I would like to see them like, implement something where you do kind of need to read the quest a bit maybe not every single one but also like make them short and sweet they don't need and not everything needs to be you know a huge block of text that's more like you know just make it short and to the point and, and more of a conversation where it's a, a back and forth which you could find that would be more interesting uh because when i was playing uh wrath of the righteous was a um 
RPG that, that I was playing and there's tons and tons and tons of reading and dialogue. And the thing is that a lot of the dialogue has a point, like depending on your choices, like it starts to mess with your alignment. Like you, you have the, the, the regular D and D alignments and as you're answering questions or whatever, you can see a chart actually tracks like your decisions and choices and shows you your alignment. And that later on affects like how, how things, uh, you know, companions or whatever, how they, they re respect, uh, respond to you. So it would be kind of interesting to see <laughs> lawful evil is so much fun. I am always chaotic neutral. I'm pretty sure that comes across in the stream, uh, because I, I feel like that's my just natural born alliance. I think <laughs> like, I'm chaotic. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but God, where was I? Oh, anyway, you had to kind of slow down and read and understand things. And it was nice. It was a nice back and forth dialogue between you and the other characters. And I would like to see that implemented in the quests. Like I don't need tons and tons and tons of exposition when I can kind of have the environment, tell the story I can have, you know, I can see things and that can kind of tell me the story too. I, I think there's, there is a way to tell a story by showing things without having to tell everything. I, in, instead of having to be like, okay, if we're going to force feed you everything. We're going to spoon it. You know, <laughs> here you go. There's this, this is the bad guy. This is why you shouldn't like this guy. I definitely, definitely agree with that. Um, however, I know for a fact that if I was the quest giver, it would be long and rambly and full of details that are unnecessary. <laughs> I, I, agree. <laughs> you don't, you don't think I'm chaotic neutral. I don't know, man. I, I definitely lean. So there's a better alignment system where it, it's, there's, um, I can't remember what's in between neutral and good, but I kind of fall in between there. I, I can't remember. They, there's, um, so instead of what is it? Nine, they have, uh, they have a lot more. There's, there's two more, I think it's actually four total changes, but I'm definitely Why not don't we neutral. Pull it up I am it. not neutral. Good. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Hold on. <laughs> okay. We'll get, we'll, this can be our little segue. Completely, uh, completely unrelated tangent. <laughs> all right. Uh, geez. What is it? Um, Let's wait for my keyboard to wake up. Come on. Okay. Expanded D and D alignment. I think Penn thinks you're neutral good. I'm definitely not neutral good. Like not in the least. You got if you guys get to know uh me a bit more, you'll, you'll definitely understand why I'm a lot more chaotic. Maybe neutral. maybe on stream Jamie is neutral good. <laughs> All right. So let's see, can I get this? Yeah, on stream, I am definitely uh I'm neutral evil. I'm definitely not neutral evil. I, I try to be a lot more ultra, uh, altruistic on, on the podcast, but if you guys knew me in real life, uh, that is that's not exactly how I am. Okay, so we'll pull this up over here. And no, you just need to see the way he drives. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. So I, so I would fall more into chaotic moral. So you guys can see, you've got lawful good, social good, neutral good, rebel good, chaotic good. Maybe the rebel good. I don't know. In between these, um, which I guess would be rebel moral. And then you've got lawful, lawful, uh, social, neutral, rebel. You guys could get that. I don't know. I don't know if it's showing. It's not showing to me. I don't know. Oh, do I not have? Oh, I don't have that. Um, I can't. Because oh, I've got the other window. Hold on. I, I can actually do this. If I. Hold on. My God. This is derailing. Slowing everything down. One second. So if I pop this over here, can you see that now? Intermission. Uh, yes, it's very small, but I can it's see It's very it. small. Let me zoom in. There we go. Okay. So in my real life, I am definitely a lot more uh, chaotic. I would say chaotic moral. Um, I am I definitely am extremely impulsive and uh, <laughs> tend to be someone who would uh, do shoots first and ask questions later. Only to realize, like, maybe I should have asked the questions first. He's definitely calmed down a bit since having three kids, though. Yeah. Like, that'll, that'll calm anybody down. <laughs> like, okay, for instance, um, you guys get to meet the host a bit. Uh, let's see. So, Cat Good, KL Neutral was more of a flip a coin uh, stuff. So, let's see. What, what, it's a couple of different stories. I used to have, so when I was in college, I would have some friends spray me down with ax and then we just kind of like let, let uh, on, on my hoodie and then they set me on fire and I just kind of run through the quad just because I thought it was funny. And I was completely sober. And then there was a, another time we get, we get these snowstorms and we'd have like this, uh, uh, outside my dorm, there was, uh, these steps and we, we, you know, we were in New Hampshire, so we get tons of snow and I'd be out there in my underwear, just doing backflips into the snow. So that's the type of person I am. 
<laughs> I have since calmed down quite a bit. Uh, I, I do try to promote a more positive uh, atmosphere too when it comes to, I, I was actually something I, I wanted to touch on. I didn't know if I actually wanted to make a full-fledged video about it uh, because there, there was a recent video by NARC, which I think was a bit, it was a bit much for me. Um, I didn't, I understand where he was coming from with it, but I feel like it kind of just continued to push the toxicity that is already in MMOs. And we've had other people that kind of have joined the the discord and things and went into went into like you, you know the ashes discord and, and started talking and then instantly got jumped on by trolls and that, that's not the impression that i would like people to have when they're coming into this because based off of seeing how the studio presents themselves it would be nice for the game to all for also present itself that way and i'm not saying like content creators should ad adhere to any type of rule or anything. It's just what I want to promote. So I, I don't want to drag other people down because they, they post a nasty comment about me. Like it, it's just not something that I feel like doing. I want to have more of that altruistic and more um, cautiously optimistic point of view and also having more conversations with people because a lot of times you end up finding out like the, the things that you disagree with tend to be either out of, um, out of uh, geez, uh, either being naive about something or, or it's just a misunderstanding. And then you kind of find out later on, like, okay, we actually agree more on, on them what we disagree with. So I really want to make sure that that here, that we're promoting um, a positive experience for people that, that come in and even for people that disagree. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, we, we had a nasty, not a nasty comment, but one of the comments we wanted to discuss um, when it comes to flying, flying later on was because of a, um, kind of a heated comment that someone had left on the YouTube. I guess they have since deleted it, but I, I'd like it to stay there so we can actually have a discussion and, and talk about those different things. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. So I'm, I don't really feel like bringing up his name, but I, I, did I bring his name up already? Because I think I just said content creator. Did I say narc? I don't God think, damn it. I don't think we need to go into further details. I think just leaving it at that. But Yeah, but I, I definitely, I kind of, for me, was a, a, like a, it's funny, but that that recent one, I just, it was, I don't know. I, I feel like it's one of those things where the high road would have been just to leave it and, and walk away and instead of, you know, going down there with, with being mocking and, and things like that. I just don't feel like that helps anybody other than getting hate clicks and, and views like that. It, obviously, it's going to get people. It was. It was very odd. It was very uncomfortable. He lost a dozen high traffic Discord users when his two mods. Oh, man. That's the thing. Like, it, <laughs> it's, it's just, I don't know. For me, that wasn't. Again, I'm not going to tell him how he, sh how he should run his, his stream. And I don't think, I, again, because in the original comment, um, the, the person was saying that Intrepid needed to step in. They don't need to. Like, I don't, I don't think they need to be involved right. at all. He doesn't, he doesn't work for them. They really can't. They don't have any authority to tell him how to run his stream. Right. He has, he has a right to well, talk about whatever he wants. I agree with that say. part. But. But, but for us and what we want to present, we don't want to have those kind of things. Like. I'm probably going to offend somebody. I swear all the time. Someone's not going to get upset. I understand that. I'm not going to change that. But again, if, if I realize like, man, I am kind of hurting a whole bunch of people by something that I'm saying. And I have in the past, like I've realized, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not, shouldn't be, you know, speaking about certain things or, 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 or talking about certain things. I may, I may change that a bit, but I, I definitely am not going to go and attack people. And I think that was, it was a little disappointing to see that. And I think that's where I'll, I'll leave that on that. I agree. I haven't actually watched the video. Um, it's, it's, about, it's extremely, which is why I don't really have, yeah, that's why I don't really have too much of a input on it, but it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to watch. Um, right. It's it just, I don't care what you say and you can say it to whoever you like, but the thing is of like, that's who you're going to pull in and, and like what you're going to promote. So anyway, that was just my little spiel of what we're trying to promote is, is a more altruistic uh, outlook and also being, uh, cop cautiously optimistic and trying to remove like, because I feel like there are a lot of pessimists when it comes to the MMO space because of how much we've been burned and, and things like that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think the reason that we got on this topic was because we were talking about, uh, alignments. Alignments. Yeah. Anyway, back to alignments. <laughs> that it's actually something that I would love to see, um, incorporated. I know that they probably won't because it doesn't make sense to have them incorporated in the game because you can obviously tell like, you know, if someone's corrupted, 
evil, but it, it would be really cool to have, I don't know. I, I love games where you can make decisions and choices and it changes the way that your character looks. And, or, or, and I, I feel like, um, Fable was a good example of that. And I, I think we've had that conversation before. Yes. Speaking of, there's that new game that's coming out that looks like an exact black and white remake, and I'm super excited. Oh, yeah, the Bring Back the God games. Yeah. I forget what it's called. Um, if any of you loved black and white, go check out... Gotta scroll up forever. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're getting so derailed. Ada Duum? Diem? Ada Diem? I don't know how to say it. I'll type it in the chat. <laughs> um... But yeah, so so personally, I, I definitely find myself falling more into the chaotic uh, chaotic moral area. I, I I make a lot of very impulsive decisions, and I think I definitely I'm not a fully good character. If if I were I uh, if if I were to be a character, I kind of would follow it more towards the anti-hero kind of kind of area, and that's why I would fall more towards that neutral because I'm gonna make the best decisions for myself. But if I do see someone who is someone who needs help with something, like I have a hard time turning people away. So let's see. Uh, Pen and Brawl was saying a chaotic good character acts as his conscience directs him with little regard for what others expect. This is, this is me. I'm chaotic good. He makes this his is- own way and he's kind and benevolent. He believes in goodness and right, but has little use for laws and regulations. He hates it when people try to intimidate others and tell them what to do. He follows his own moral compass, which, although good, may not agree with society. Uh, without society, chaotic good is the best alignment you can be because it combines a good heart with a free spirit. And I would say that Annie and I both kind of fall in that area. Just sometimes you're I do things. That, uh, you're definitely a little more on the chaotic side if it was uh, like a, a range. <laughs> also, sometimes uh, I can head more towards evil on uncertain things, but those don't need to be talked about on this podcast. Uh, we can... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I just, I'm, I'm going to take what's mine. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I don't, I don't need, no one clip that. That could be, that That's could so be bad really at bad context. context. I was going to say, no one needs to, don't, <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh my God. Yeah. This is why we need the After Dark podcast. So we, uh, we can talk about <laughs> other things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I would like to, it would be really cool to see some type of alignment system in there. and. I don't know, it's just another layer of RP. Like I, I love role-playing games and I would love to see a lot more role-playing added into the game. And I think that would be a, a nice way to see it of even just the way that you interact in like seeing, because um, let me see if I can actually pull it up because Wrath of the Righteous actually tracks uh, your alignment. Let's see. So as you're going through quests, it kind of, it moves. Um, where is it? Yeah. This is the, uh, so as you're playing the game, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. So as you're playing the game and you're answering questions, like it, you say you choose the chaotic neutral alignment, you'll start here, but as you're playing, you'll either kind of move up here. Maybe you'll do something evil. So it brings you down here and you can kind of see like where you end up going. And then like, as you start doing more things in the same area, it's a bigger and bigger, bigger circle. So it's just a really cool thing to just kind of look at like, when, when you're playing it, and for me personally, I try to make decisions I would actually make. So it, it's cool to actually see like, okay, where do I fall? And I typically yeah, do fall like here right here. Where you would be. Yeah. It's so funny because um, our oldest daughter, she tries to, oh my God, press the wrong buttons. Uh, she always tries to be such an edgelord when we, we play games. Like she, it, she is a murder hobo when it comes to like, in any t- time we're playing role-playing games, she just wants to start altercations. And it's so funny because I swear she would probably be like lawful good. <laughs> like, but yeah. she always wants to play like she's like thing. chaotic evil. She just wants to walk up to someone and stab them in their face for no reason. <laughs> but in reality though, she's definitely lawful good. Like this kid does not get in trouble, like tries her best to follow everything. And it's just, it's so funny because the second she's in fantasy world, like she just wants to be evil. <laughs> exactly. So, so Penn, we're, we're definitely would be hard to do in an MMO, like we're decision wise of how it affects the world. I agree, but I would like it to, I mean, it would be really cool to see how it could affect you. Obviously, like, don't add this in. This should be like later on. There's so many other features in the game, but it would be really cool to just, just visually your character kind of changes based off of those. I just always thought that was really neat. 
<laughs> yeah, no scope creep. Trust me, I agree. We do not need, do not add in these features. Don't listen to me. I'm just, I'm just throwing out things that I think would be neat. It's just, I think it's, it's just con conversation. It's like the, the disclaimer, anytime we bring up an idea that I think would be good for, or we think would be good for the game, it's like an idea for a future expansion. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should put that disclaimer out there. We do not want anything added outside of the current scope of the game, which we can now move into. Oh, wait, no. Never no, mind, we cannot move into. Relate, um, on the topic of scope creep. No. <laughs> Um, how many of you have played Mists of Pandaria expansion in World of Warcraft out of curiosity? Because low key was like one of their better expansions. I thought it was somewhat anyway, um, because there is something that they did in Mists of Pandaria that I actually think would be kind of a nice feature to have in Ashes. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Especially because okay. you can't. As far as I remember, we can't inspect other people's gear. Um, there's not going to really be item levels, anything like that. Um, but I remember that, which bear with me, because it was like eight years ago <laughs> that I played it. But um, they used to have like the, the tank ratings, the DPS ratings, the healer ratings. So you would do like those trials to try and win like either bronze, silver, or gold. And personally for me, I think that would actually be kind of a cool feature to have and of course optional but to be able to like if you defeat a certain trial or something like not necessarily a title but like a certain ranking or rating that people can see um when you know looking at your character i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah it, i i actually really like that because you get it it'd be nice to say hey i'm a gold star tank and then it makes you want to be a better tank learn how to play and it's not like those challenges were super hard. Like you could become a gold star tank fairly easy, at least based off of like what, what I did, like it, it wasn't, you know, you might fail a couple of times and they have to do it. But I did like that having that challenge of you, you do these different things and then you could have that, you know, gold star rating as a tank healer DPS. And then it, it kind of did give you an idea of, okay, this is like an S tier player and, and things like that. I can see how that could potentially make people not want to play with other people. And I, I can see, I can see benefits and positives of both. Right. Yeah. I can definitely see the cons with it because then for people who don't do well in those challenges, like they kind of get excluded. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to see that happen, but I think it would be good for, because Jamie and I used to be raid leaders. Um, both of us would be the, the tanks in, in the raids and like it definitely made it easier to try and pick good people for the raid when we needed to find people outside of our guild so we could actually know the person was dependable <laughs> right and, or at least knew their class <laughs> and it's not like we were just snobs like as long as you were a silver rated or higher like we we would kind of take the chance of bringing there and if you were a bronze you know starred person we we understood like okay so you're trying we may kind of take someone in like for a dps to kind of kind of fill something but it did give well, us it was a, kind of like we we would have bronze people here and there, but we didn't want our whole raid to be bronze. People. Exactly. You know, like <laughs> it's, it's fine to have a carry here and there and kind of teach them and, and try to get there. But it, it, one thing though, for seeing that people were actually trying to attempt the trials did give you an idea of, okay, this player is a bit more invested. And I don't know, because it, it is like the hardcore side of me. I, I've always kind of said that I was more semi hardcore. I, I don't know if that's actually a spot anymore. Um, but I, I actually had this, this thought the other day, uh, where it was today, but you know, I, I always categorize, you would have hardcore players, which were your S tiers that would, you know, do server first, world first, semi hardcore players where they cleared the content, but maybe they weren't the best. And then kind of everyone underneath that was casual. So when it's, it's like, said semi, but, but yeah, I, I would try to have, um, so I would try to find players that kind of match that speed. Uh, of the semi hardcore, like, I'm not going to get super pissed. I'm not going to make sure you have best in slot. I'm not going to make sure like you need to be fully geared, make sure you have all your stuff, make sure you, you know, you're not coming in with missing parts of your gear, but I wasn't telling people you need to play this way or that way. So I kind of feel like that's where that semi, that, um, that's semi hardcore came in, but like the semi hardcore player in me, like I want that. So when I am playing, I know who to grab, who, who to, you know, bring into things. And then, like I said, the, the altruistic part of me is, is viewing like is that going to cause some type of, uh, <laughs> Daryl, 
you gotta you might need to explain to me in chat i understand i think i'm thinking of what you're thinking when i keep saying semi but i might need to know if it means something different where i don't want to know if there's a culture i was difference. gonna say that's that's not ringing a bell for something pervy for me at least <laughs> i have I, I, I have a pervy thought but i don't know if it's the same thing <laughs> i don't I'm thinking semi pro no i'm thinking I, I have a i have a halfway half is that what we're talking about um but yeah, so the, the hardcore player in me wants to have that. So that way I have an idea of who to come in, like asked to be in a, in a raid, who I want to. Yeah, I know what he's talking about. I don't know how you get that from, I didn't say the other word. Um, but yeah, like it gives you that idea of like who, who to play with. And then I could see that on the flip side being a potentially toxic thing. Um, but I think that's a much better way to do it instead of, you know, inspecting everyone telling people how they should be playing, having DPS meters. Uh, that, that was actually something that came up recently in a discussion I was having uh, my thoughts on DPS meters and... Uh, well, that's right. We're not going to have DPS meters too, which no. is kind of what I was thinking that would be useful for. <laughs> right. It, 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 yeah. Okay. That's where the conversation came up from is that we thought that would be a nice way of instead of having a DPS meter in the game, you would have rankings so you can see, okay, this person, you know, hit this challenge rating and, and this challenge rating. So you kind of had an idea of like who you're playing with. And I don't know, I, I think that's a much less invasive way because it does feel bad. Um, excuse me. When, when I, <laughs> I remember I, I was in, you guys be nice. Um, the, the, I do, I do remember there was a raid that we were doing and I, I don't know if I was just having an off day or there was a, I, I'm actually, I think I'm going to argue for having DPS meters, but I still don't want them in the game. <laughs> um, because I, there was a point where I really, like we were doing a raid and everyone's giving me shit because my DPS was, was garbage. And, uh, I got pissed and I sunk a bunch of time into learning how to play my class properly. And it forced me to become a better player. So the next time I went in there, I was topping the charts and telling everyone go fuck themselves. Uh -huh. Um, so I think I accidentally just agreed that I would like to see DPS mirrors, but I also, I would like to keep them out of the game. I think overall they can be kind of a toxic tool I and mean, there should be some in-game ways to tell the type of player that you're getting when, when you do do group content. Uh, also thing too, is I think as much as like negative pushback sucks, it does in a lot of aspects of life pushes people to do better and be better, like to try and prove people wrong, you know, like, <laughs> um, as far as like the DPS, cause I've, I've been that person whose DPS was low and I got kicked from a raid and then like, it made me determined to get my DPS up. And so like, I can see, I can see it from both sides. Um, there's definitely like, it doesn't feel good to be kicked from a raid because your DPS is bad and somebody calls you out for not using one of your abilities that you didn't even know that you had <laughs> yeah. but it's a learning experience because if somebody didn't call me out i probably would have continued to not use that ability like <laughs> right and i guess there should be in-game ways uh for visually seeing if a player is holding their own one of the things that i think sucks about dps meters is i th when when it's accept accepted uh, status quo that you're going to have them. I feel like content tends to be built around having those DPS meters, which then, because players are going to get punished for one, you know, um, raids where there's a lot of moving around and, and things like that. And then I would like to see even the tooling of bosses not really be so much built around DPS as much as strategy. Um, you, you, there should be some DPS checks, right? Like w where you're doing things and you know, so you tend to have some certain bosses are a DPS check or like an armor check or gear check to see if you are ready for that. If an enrage, enrage timer hits after 10 minutes, or, or you, you guys are going at it for a half hour or whatever, and, and then you see the enrage timer coming and you're like, oh shit, we aren't geared for this. We can't do this. We might be able to heal for this, but we're not getting where we need to be. That right there, I think, is a fine enough DPS check. Um, so... I don't know. It's, it's a weird spot because I can see the benefits of having the DPS meters, but also at the same time, I think that they can be too much of a, a crutch. And also it can make it so that people, again, having that throwaway culture of someone comes in and you realize they suck and you just drop them. And there's been plenty of times as raid leaders where we notice a, a player was not very good 
and we actually kind of coached them as we're going. I, I can remember there was this one hunter. Um, do you remember, I think it was, I don't remember the boss in Warlords. I can't remember his name, but he was the one that had the butcher's axe and he had to kind of jump one person back and forth. You remember oh, we yeah. had two stacks. We had this one. He was, yeah, he was a very, or no, he was the second boss in the yeah. uh, raid. I can't even remember the name of the raid. Um, yes, I remember. So we had this one hunter that was in there and uh, I, th I think he wasn't I using... think he literally was called the butcher. It was a butcher? Okay. It may have been. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. Anyway, we, so <laughs> you, you would pick a hunter and they would kind of go between these two groups. So that way it, w it would split the damage buff that would come. This guy kept failing over and over and over. And he kept failing over and over. And then, you know, it, we, we finally like, you know, are you in vent? Okay, we get everyone in vent. We, we're talking. And, the, and it's like, hey, man, like, do you need help with this? Like, do you need, need to? It's so we were, you know, going through like, okay, what are your abilities set up? What are you doing with this? So we would actually take the time to show them. But again, I think I'm arguing for DPS meters because I could see too, like one, I could visually see, but I also noticed this guy was lagging. I'm not going to say it. I saw that the player was lagging behind on those meters. So I don't know. I think, I, uh, I don't know where I feel on this. That's why, yeah. Because I keep arguing for them instead of against them. It's definitely like, I don't know. It's, I see the benefit to having them. And then I also see like the toxicity that can come from it, which honestly, I think that's why I think the metals would be a good thing because it's not necessarily like tied to how much damage you do. But, but how good of a player was, you are. The way, yeah, the way it was in Mist of Pandaria is you had to do like multiple different challenges and survive through it and kill everything in a timely manner and stuff um, to be able to be awarded the next medal up. So it's really kind of based on your skill as a player, which I think that's kind of where I was going with it is because you can be, you can have di a high DPS and still kind of be a shitty player <laughs> when it comes to mechanics. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, so. Right. I don't know. That's, that's kind of what the way I picture it is because it's a way that it's not necessarily. Well, and then you have out somebody for low DPS because they can have low DPS, but still be a proficient player who can do all the mechanics and stuff. Right. And then, then you have like, you know, the bleeds or, or, or dots that would completely mess up the DPS meters. You'd have a warlock or something hit something. And then all of a sudden he's at the top of the chart because we also hit hit berserk or whatever and then we went through and all of a sudden he is like way past everyone as as it goes on it obviously levels out but it's like you know they, they could use that of saying like hey like uh you know look how good i am but also at the same time it's like man you just all you did was trick the meter that's it's not like you were that good <laughs> um I, mean, I always love the first few seconds of the DPS meter where like all your <laughs> AI oh, I know. You stuff kick in and you're like, look how great I am. <laughs> all right. So I'm, I'm going to go through, we're actually going to go through the, uh, the, the chat because I did see a few different things in there. Um, Penham was saying that they would like them to not have boosting because that makes player, uh, be, and, and to make players learn their character. I think that too. Uh, WoW currently has like this new player island that you can learn your, your care. You can learn your character. They kind of give you your, your basic spells and, and you go and try that after you boost. And, uh, it doesn't let you do tanking or healing. And so if you planned on boosting that character and learning how to do any of those things, like it doesn't teach you how to do that. So I do think if you're going to play a character and if you are not, I don't know, because I, I feel like there's another spot and it's a convenience thing and, and it's a time thing. But I, I think overall it, it's healthy for the game to make it not alt friendly. But I, w I was going to say too, like, I, I do like having the ability to level alts faster, but again, where this game is designed not to be alt friendly and for your positions, your, your, your decisions to matter that I, again, I don't want to see it in the game because if it's in there, I'm going to use it. Um. Ninja Wormer saying, I'd rather see the difficulty of content be based more on learning mechanics and responding to situations well, as opposed to just cheap DPS, which is just going to come down to min-maxing and being forced to use a second character class that you don't, don't want. That right there is one of the reasons why I don't want uh, DPS meters, because I want people to be able to be creative with their builds. I want to see lots and lots of different builds, especially with we're going to have skill points again in an MMO. Like it's been so long since you actually had a talent tree that you could actually build out 
instead of having the same cookie cutter builds all the time. Uh, um, Ninja Worm there? said, <laughs> yeah. Ninja Worm said, yes, I'm very against DPS meters. How would you feel, Annie? A raid kicked you out uh, because Beastmasters are less DPS than Spellmancers or something like that. DPS meters, I think, will lead to min maxing like that which I have had that happen before. In World of Warcraft, I have had to change specs because my current spec was not the highest DPS one of the three. Um, I play a hunter in World of Warcraft. Um, and yes, I've had that happen, or if I didn't change specs, I've gotten kicked before. And I did say earlier, like, that doesn't feel good when that happens. Um, my idea, though, was for ratings. I'm not... I'm don't want DPS meters in ashes. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, the idea of the rating is less of, it's less of like what, so let's see how, how do I want to say this? You would have, it doesn't matter what spec you're playing. So you could be, say you're a beast master, right? You could be a gold ranked beast master. And also if you're a spell mancer, you could be gold ranked that way. So it, it's less of looking at the the class is just looking at the player as a whole of where they're kind of proficient and again it, i think for that it really helps more for like raid leaders and, and building the groups and i could see too of like how that could cause some some issues in that way because it, in what i really would like to see is people investing in their players so if you are going to run a guild if you're if you're going to have raiders that you are going to take those people on and you're going to know, you're going to know who's falling off, who's, who's not, who you need to help with. Um, but it, I, I guess majority, uh, sorry, not majority, uh, it, for the most part, it helps when you're, when you have pugs and you need to kind of pull someone in and, and who you're looking for. So. Find someone trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes. And I think too, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I think the trials and mist of Pandaria was tailored to your class and your maybe your spec too, or just your class. I don't remember. It, it was high uh, tier. Yeah, but if it wasn't, that's the way I would envision it being. So, like a bard would have a different trial that would be tailored to what bards do versus like a warrior. <laughs> right. You you would have different. So so in in that mist of Pandaria trials, like you had healer trials, tank trials, and DPS. So. You would go in there it was kind of like this, this single player instance and as a healer you would have to heal the npcs and stuff there in that so it, it it was specific for the type of role that you were going to play and it, it literally you could just have your your bronze star your, your silver star or your gold star and again it's just a tool for people who who are raid leading and being able to see and like i said like the, the guilds that are going to want s tier people are always going to find a way to find s tier people and that's why, I, like I said, we kind of fall more in that semi-hardcore where I do want to get the content done. If you keep messing up, like I probably will kick you after a while. It's just on the third wipe, I'm like, all right, if you're not getting it, like, it, you know, find another group to play with or something. Like, But I do try to teach. Um, I, I try. I, I mean, there's times where we wipe like five, six, seven times and then we call it a night. And probably, like, probably more than that. <laughs> right. So, so we are pretty... Um, because it's time consuming, right? To have to go out and find people to, to play with you and, and things like that. And I do try to give people the benefit of the doubt that they can learn and, and things like that. And I think that's the responsibility of a good raid leader is teaching people, maybe not how to play their class, but you know, saying like, okay, so when this happens, pay attention to this and, and try this. Right, exactly. Like at least giving them a chance. If by like the third wipe, they're still making the same mistakes, then it's time to go. But right. um, <laughs> Let's see. Yes. Uh, Ninja Worm said, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that, which is the, um, the medals, especially if the challenge actually helped teach the kind of skills a good raider would need, like avoiding AOEs or other mechanics, then it could serve as a training guild or training ground in addition to awarding a rating. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much how it was in Mists of Pandaria. And I'm actually kind of sad they got rid of that because it was a really nice touch to the game and it made, it made putting together a raid group really easy. And it also like, I enjoyed doing the challenges. Like it took me a little bit, I think, on my druid to get the gold medal. Um, and it helps me learn my class a lot better and like figure out my rotation and stuff. So it was, I, I have a lot of good things to say about it. I can definitely see where there could be some cons when it comes to like gatekeeping and stuff like that. But like if you're stuck at a bronze medal and can't get to silver, like that's more so on you, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and adding more to that, that, that conversation 
is I would like to see Ashes have, um, I just want to say, all right, good night, Daryl. Have a good night. Um, I'm not ignoring you. I see you. Um, I would like to see lower level raids uh, be incorporated in the game. I think that game MMOs do a huge disservice to, to players by having end game uh, be, have raids and all these different things at end game because it does not allow people who have never played these type of games or, or have gotten into that to understand one, how those work, the mechanics of them. You go through this whole game doing all this stuff and then you get to the end and all of a sudden you're like, wait, what is this? I've never done this. And I remember my first time, like kind of going to learning about raids and wanting to get in them. And I was not a good player when it, when it started, I remember someone wanted me to be off tank, um, because I was a warrior and I was like, I have no idea what you just asked me to do. Like, I thought we were just, I, I thought we were coming in here, killing bosses. I was like, I don't, I don't know what we're doing. And it, it took me a while. And then I, I was lucky because the, the, the raid group that I was with taught me how to do things. They, they you know, they, they gave me the time to understand. They, they taught me the mechanics. So I would get to, I could get to be in there and learn my class better. And I, again, I think that was coming out. I think, uh, that was towards the end of wrath. Uh, I, I didn't start raiding till much later. In my MMO experience, uh, I was I was definitely a solo player for a long time, and I think maybe that's why I also enjoy the social aspect because the game was very difficult playing by myself. Um, I would do dungeons and stuff, but like raids were a completely different beast, and it it was nice being taught and and learning those different things. But I think they should be in the game much sooner than they are. Yeah, I agree. As well, there was a video we were watching that was kind of touching on that topic and how like it's kind of the content that everybody seems to race to at the end game and then you don't have any experience with it <laughs> so like uh, dungeons you do but raids not so much and you should learn how to do raid do raids in general before you hit max level <laughs> at least in my opinion yeah, it, it's just, it, it just seems odd that so many games you have, like dungeons don't really prepare you in the way that raids do because there's so many more people, there's so many more moving parts. And even though dungeons can kind of feel like a small scale raid, like it's not the same, you just don't get the same, the same feel. Although I guess, um, because the party group in ashes will be eight man. So you, it kind of will feel a bit more like a, uh, more like a raid. Um, Penham was saying too, that they, they think, uh, the AOC dungeons will be more complex than most MMOs, which would be very nice. Uh, I love, no, I can't, it's still, there's still so much mystery. So <laughs> so excited to see how, how they plan on executing those. <laughs> I saying like, I love, I love doing dungeons. Um, I love mechanics and games. I hate, especially as a tank, I hate when the whole premise is I'm just staying there and hitting things. Like I do like having to move around, catch aggro, paying attention you know, having to raid call and, and stuff like that. It's one of my favorite things of MMOs is actually raid leading and tanking. It, it's just, it, I, there's, you don't get that from any other type of game. And that's one of my favorite things to do in MMOs. Um, so I would like to see like, you know, a challenging dungeon where you, if you're not on comms or something, and I, I get it, like not everyone wants to talk and that's fine, but I think they're going to have uh, discord integrated in to, to the game as well. So that way you can at least hear and like be be like listen to like okay we gotta shift we gotta do this and there's just something fun there's something really fun about like just having that conversation and that tactical side of things uh ninja worm was saying some kind of raid around level 30 or so uh would award a nice set of gear to help you push uh help you onto the push to end game uh make it not too complicated so it can be done pick up fairly easy but will at least introduce the concepts of raid mechanics um, and then Penham was saying scaling, if you kill the first boss too fast, the second boss is going to, uh, <laughs> going to knock your ass. Imagine a Metro dungeon, like five bosses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's another cool thing too, is that I, I'm still kind of a little confused on how oh, the, you know, we're being raided by Golden Feather Tavern again. Sweet. Welcome. welcome our Thank favorite you. people. <laughs> I know. Um, so I, it, it is still, I am still wondering how the dungeons are going to work because if they're if they are open world and not instance how that dungeon scaling works for me it's been kind of hard to comprehend how that how that system works because 
uh, unless you're going to be going through and like a gate locks behind you or something as you push forward. Because as far as I know, like it's kind of an, an open, uh, it, it's like all out where everyone can come in and everything. I still don't understand how the boss scaling is going to work. So obviously that's something that's going to, we'll probably, we're obviously we're going to start seeing in alpha two. And thank you guys. Welcome uh, to our show. And thank you for rating. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, we're having multiple discussions. Uh, today we were talking about, forget what we we're talking about. <laughs> we went over the cosmetic switch. We did the so cosmetic the, switch. Um, accord, the Accord of Autumn. So we looked through the pictures and read the descriptions for everything. And then we were talking about... Solo gameplay and MMOs. Solo gameplay. And now we were talking about an idea for having glass medals. So since there's not going to be DPS meters, we were discussing something that could be a good stand-in would be like passing challenges that give you like a either a bronze, silver, or gold medal. Um, we were thinking about Mists of Pandaria in World of Warcraft, how they used to do that. And kind of like the pros and cons to that. So, <laughs> and now I think we're going to be moving on to the next topic. Yeah, this actually would be a nice segue because of what's on the screen. So we're going to now move into talking about flying mounts in MMOs and the pros and cons of that. I've seen that circulating quite a bit. Um, definitely in favor of the metals and dungeons. Yes, I think having the silver, um, sorry, the brown, silver, or gold is a nice alternative to having a DPS meter, especially for raid leaders. So that way you can see who's getting in there. And like we, we touched on talking about, like we can understand that they can still kind of be a toxic system. Um, but I think it, it can, it's a far less toxic system than having a, uh, having DPS meters and being so like micromanaging everybody's, you know, their classes and builds. Oh, Lord sub to get, thank you. Is that like a six month sub? I think so. <laughs> yeah. three months. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um. I wonder how that comes off in the podcast. <laughs> uh, even if not replacement for DP merit, it'd be fun competition. That um, I know. I, I think that was really fun too. And it just, it makes you want to push yourself. So, and then it's kind of like that thing. I, I actually, you know what? I think it actually would lend itself really well to ashes where the whole idea is that it, you don't get partici to participation trophies. You have to earn your things. So even having like a title that comes along with, I completed the gold star tri trials. Like, I think that would be nice. So I, th I think that really helps to lend itself to one, what the game's also promoting of like, you need to earn your shit. Like you, you, you can't, I, I, I went this far without swearing. Um, Daryl, that was definitely the longest one so far. Uh, so yeah, we have to actually earn the things that you're doing. So I think that would be a really cool, uh, yeah, buying your gear doesn't make you good. It doesn't like you, you can have the best gear in the world and if you're a shitty player, like it's going to show through. Um, right, exactly. Like I said, you can have high DPS and not no mechanics. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ninja Worm was saying, actually, not, really not a fan of the flying mounts idea in AOC. They said there will only be about 10 on a server of 10,000. That kind of rubs me the wrong way. Only streamers and mega guilds will ever get them, and it feels very elitist. So this is where we're probably, <laughs> we're going to have probably a bit of uh, diverging opinions um, on this because I am of the mind that I feel like flying mounts ruin MMOs and that I do want to see them on like a limited amount. Um, Mare is not elite. I know the, you, there are multiple ways to acquire them. You can also find like, um, eggs in the world that you could potentially, it's going to be very rare. And that's the thing too. Like, uh, or was that just dragons? Are the only flying mounts uh, going to be dragons? No, it's not only dragons. There's other. Okay. I think the eggs, though. I think they all come from eggs. <laughs> Let's see who just who just redeemed suggest a poll. Someone someone wants to suggest a poll. What? It just says redeem suggest a poll. It doesn't say. Who yeah, it didn't it. say who did it. Is that was that anonymous? Is, um, was this guy? If you if you redeemed that. Like, oh, I see that. Okay, it's Skyx. Okay, I see it. Okay, we'll we'll put that oh, up. There. I see. Okay. <laughs> all right. How should flying mounts work? Super rare. Not rare, Jeremy, help with what I want to say. Okay, I get uh, what you want to say. Um, I will always start that poll in a second. Um, actually, you know what? I will do that real quick before. Sure, I'm trying to get caught up on chat. Yeah. If you want to answer some questions um, in chat. Vertex, Vertex said, I actually like the idea of land base and gliding mounts only make people enjoy the landscape a lot more. You respect the space and the craftsmanship of it. I definitely agree with that. 
Um, I know in World of Warcraft, they introduced flying and it definitely was convenient. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about with like those level boosts and stuff. Like they're there for convenience and they ruin games, but people still use them, even though they know it's going to ruin the game. <laughs> um, so back to flying, like you see so much more when you're actually like down at ground level running around. And to me, like anytime I've gotten to the point where I get flying, it <laughs> definitely, I don't know. It just kind of changes the experience. You suddenly feel like out of the action. I definitely think too with, um, how ashes is set up with like the PVP and the caravans and everything. If they added flying, it's going to completely derail the the way the game is going to work <laughs> um because everybody will just be like unattackable in the air unless they have air combat but even still like you're not really going to bump into anybody anymore and like the roads won't really matter like right it makes so much content not matter and that's my reason why oh did youtube just die on me whatever we'll just watch the <laughs> circle we don't need this in the background we'll just uh and just look at your look we'll at just your look map. at the map um <laughs> But yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the flying kind of ruins the a game a lot be, that is supposed to be built around exploration and flying all these different things. And when you, you said, you said, should mounts and ashes be rare? Oh, you guys. Kind that of, should be flying. That's flying, flying mounts. mounts. <laughs> Just you guys answer that. Correct. That should be flying. I don't know how to edit the poll. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um, but yeah, so. It, it does well, it does feel bad of not being able to have flying mounts. Like it, it's going to kind of feel bad of like, oh man, I can't get that. And I get the mentality too of, oh, thank you, Skyx, for gifting. I, I missed that. Skyx gifted two subs. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah. It, Sorry, I'm not even caught up on the chat. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> okay, everyone knows I've been flying. Um, but yeah, it, it, the thing too of the idea that only mega guilds and, and stuff are going to be able to do that, it, it's hard to say because one, there's only going to be so many, there's going to be multiple different servers. There's only going to be so many different servers with streamers. Um, and, and also like mega guilds, mega, guild, mega guilds kind of end up burning themselves out. So like once you get to that top where you're just, dominating everything i feel especially in like this type of setting where there isn't really as much as it's really cool to have like one metropolis it seems like the whole gameplay of destroying that metropolis and going to war and bringing it up and down like that that lends itself a lot to how the game's going to be played uh so i feel like a lot of the mega guilds are probably going to burn themselves out they'll probably have inner turmoil but another thing too is gotta remember that even smaller guilds can ally themselves so you can go to war with those people. You can attack their castle. Like you don't just have to have one guild against another. You could get the whole server to be like, okay, we're done with this. Just throw tons and tons of bodies at that one guild. So I understand the the feeling of mega guilds may take over. And that, that's kind of been a thing that a, a lot of people have, have worried about. I've seen that brought up a few different times. Um, and, and then the, the thing is that a lot of it always comes down to they tend to burn themselves out. It may last for a little while, but also like if, if they're just holding that node and so, say no one's able to get ground on that, like get, get footing on that, people are just going to move to a different part of the map and just start playing away from them. And then they're going to, you're either going to starve them out. No one's going to want to trade with them. There's going to be multiple ways to actually handle that. Uh, Skyx was saying that he's conflicted. On one side, I feel that I would love to have my dragon mount, but it would feel that much better knowing I have a mount that nobody else has. Just really a slim chance to have. How cool would it be to have an OP dragon mount and just fly around causing people, uh, er, causing people to hide underneath you? That's see, that's the feel, right? And we should have those things where we want to go for things, like we we want to aspire and be able to. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the poll was specific to flying mounts. I didn't mean to just put mounts. I don't know how to edit it currently. <laughs> I don't know. Can I pull that back yeah, up? Yeah, I agree. Like, I, obviously, being the dragon lover I am, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sad that um, chances of getting a dragon are are slim. Um, But, like, who knows? Like, you have that chance of finding a dragon egg, and then you bring it to your local animal husbandress, me, <laughs> to raise it for you. Like, um, I don't know if it's going to work think, how that one's I don't work. think, 
I don't think having something that not everybody can have is a bad thing. Like it adds kind of that like competitive edge and kind of like a goal to strive for. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I can definitely see why like people would feel that way, but at the same time, like it's not always going to be toxic. Like it's not always going to be like the popular streamers and the elites that have the flying mounts. Like there's going to be servers where it's different. Um, and who knows, like if you make it your goal, like it could be you. <laughs> right. Like, like if you play a ton and ton, like and try to grind, like I, I'm pretty sure there's, there is a chance that you can get there. You're not like some, it, it, I guess it's one of the things too, is like some stuff you may just never do. Like, and that's okay to like see people who have stuff that you don't and still be like, dude, that's fucking awesome. They have a title that may, you might not get. Like it, 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 it has that, that makes you strive to want to become a better player or do these things. At least for me, it does. Like I remember um, they were going to, towards the end of Miss and Pandaria, they were going to completely change the way that raids were going to work. And wow, they were going to make it so they're flexible. So they had like a special title um, for, for killing Garrosh in, in uh, was it the Siege of Orgrimmar? And I was, I, at that point, like, I was kind of like iffy on raid, like we were kind of getting into it. It was before I even started tanking. Um, and I remember like, man, I really want that. I want to have that title. And I just, I kept playing, I kept playing. I, I figured out, like, I started getting with all these groups. I asked everybody, I'm like, hey, can I do this with you? Can I do this with you? Hey, can I do this? And I got better and better. And then I remember it was like a week before and I got that title and it was sweet because only people who killed him before that change could have that title. And it's just cool to have that. Now no one gives a shit because it's so old. But it's nice to have something to be like, look how hard that I worked for this. And like, yeah, you guys should be jealous that I have this. And it should make you want to do that. But again, yes, I, I understand Ninja Web 2, where you're coming from, where, where 10 out of <laughs> 10 out of 10,000 seems very limited. Um, but the, the thing is, too, is that for me, I, I like the idea of dragons and flying mounts being extremely rare. Like it, it's just, even lore wise, I think having dragons be, dragons themselves being extremely rare, where you've got only 10 out of 10,000, like I think that's awesome. I, I really don't like when games throw dragons at everybody. It kind of ruins it for me because <laughs> it, a lot of lore too, like if you, if you think about how, how dragons are, they're very, um, I wanna say, they're, they're very solitary. In, in, I mean, nobody, nobody's riding smog. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, no, I think I like the idea of dragons being really rare and something that when you see it, you're like, holy fuck, you know? <laughs> right. Um, I wanted to answer. Oh gosh. What the, uh, sorry. Got to scroll back. <laughs> uh, okay. Way back. Skyx said, my thing that is if flying mounts are located to X amount of people, what if some of those people leave the game? For whatever reason and still hold that spot so the flying mount goes to waste per se I, um I'm the thing sure. about that is that all flying mounts expire so right like you if don't... you if you find an egg like it's only gonna i don't know what the expiration is on them but everything has or all the flying mounts have a decay timer um i think the one for the mayor is for as long as they are mayor which they will eventually not be mayor at some point <laughs> right um so, I mean, if they, if they have a flying mount that they found and then they go inactive, like that decay timer is still ticking and eventually they're just going to lose it right. and then someone else will find it. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is like, I, I don't know. I think overall for the health of a game, not having flying mounts is really good. We are going to have gliding mounts and has, has, how many people in the chat have actually played, um, Arcade. Have I actually played Arcade? Also, yeah, they don't have flying in Orcage, right? It's just the gliding. <sighs> Vertex just banned the word. There's literally the whole discussion of this one. Um, right. <laughs> so, no, your royal steed. So, yeah, we'll say royal steed. <laughs> <laughs> your gliding steed. I'm not even, I'm, I'm replacing not even there that. yet. I'm That's, trying to, trying to read. <laughs> that was cruel. Um, so we can't use the word that we're talking, uh, that this topic result, uh, revolves around. You guys are being really mean today. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Sorry, catching up. 
Um, okay, so way back, Vertex said, I, what oh, how does the voice Vertex? band work? Okay, back we're not doing the here. voice band. <gasps> How long? It's, this, is a, this is supposed to be an audio medium. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> Vertex said, I 100% respect that point of view. For me personally, I don't ever want to be a mayor or guild leader. I'm also okay with them getting special things because of the work they have put into maintaining their status. Oh my goodness, we have a hydrate, we have a posture check. Jesus, guys, my goodness, I'm like way far back. I can't read as fast as you guys can. <laughs> what are you even like? Are we not supposed to be talking? I'm not there yet. Hang on, I'm, I'll get there. Oh, I can talk. Oh, damn it. Okay, that's something. Don't leave it to me. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good at monologuing. <laughs> oh, let's see. I'll just read comments. Vertex said election day or election is the only way to become a mayor in one node type, though. Um, Revan said, it really is an immersion breaker when I see players riding flying mounts, especially dragons with really cool particle effects everywhere. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. Um, as cool as it is, I, I like it better when the cool mounts are more rare and you only see them here and there versus like everybody being on something like crazy colorful. And... Where is he going? Oh God, it's just me. Ah, uh, let's see. Nuclear Tango said the mayor will be voted out or removed and won't have it if they are not playing. I think that was in response to if they become inactive. All right, trying to catch up on chat. You guys are all typing faster than I could read. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think the gliding mounts are going to scratch that itch for a lot of people who are going to be missing the flying. But it's happened. Oh my goodness. Jamie's <laughs> like running all over the place. <laughs> All right, I'm coming on my timeout. So I see you got a in real life voice band. Yes, I had it in <laughs> real. I know. I can't believe that. What? You're so bad. Did you get? I'm not even down there. Oh my goodness, you guys are typing so much. Oh, he caught you telling me that I can talk with the mic muted. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind. Did you get word banded again? I'm going to guess yes. All right, I'm scrolling down. I'm going to miss a bunch of comments. Oh, let's see. All right. Ninja said, absolutely, I'm fine with dragons being super rare. It's more the functionality of flying being so restricted that annoys me. Which, I mean, I can agree with that. I think because I'm used to games that either do have play flying or don't, and everybody, at least at some point, can get access to it. But I'm intrigued to see how this would work. And I do like that it's going to be a symbol of status <laughs> um, for the time being that you have it. Um, and also, like, I don't know, a cool thing, too, if you do get a flying mount, like, take take screenshots and stuff and, like, share it with your friends and things <laughs> if, if you're lucky enough to get it. What are we talking about? All right, that's good enough. <laughs> God. <laughs> Lord, okay, that should be the last one. Um, <laughs> were you guys thinking... Uh... What area are you guys thinking we'll settle in? I don't think we've thought about it all that much. Dude, I know. I was just I was just drinking water. You guys are ruining the podcast right now, making it so I can't speak. <laughs> Honestly, it's just giving Annie a time to, to talk, um, which completely... Gives me anxiety. I don't like being the only one talking. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure anytime I get up from my chair where you're like, oh, no. I know. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> don't leave me alone. <laughs> um, I don't know if we've actually thought about where we would settle... Uh, when it comes to the notes, I know I'm, I am really interested in, uh, let's see, is my mouse going to show up on this? Okay. So this guy right here, uh, this center one sounds really fun. I, I think being, let's see, I think being like close to the, um, th that being like probably the most concept contested and where you can like attack. Yeah. The, the castle that's in there where you can also like kind of shoot at it with the ships and stuff. I think that'd be really fun. Um. Oh, we have a picture in Discord. Yeah, there's a piss. Uh, Jesus, there's a picture in our Discord. Um, for, uh, someone had tweeted. I, I guess it was a spoiler because they, they had shown that. Oh, obviously it's going to be owned by a massive guild. Like I know it. They have picture. I know. I I misspell. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is no pictures in in the, in the Discord. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's that's real funny. Oh, uh, I almost thought that was a real one. I was about to get real in the way. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's freaking funny. Um, I guess I'll just keep talking. No. 
Yeah. So when it comes to, I don't know, like, uh, where have you thought of where you would like to like what biome or whatever you would, you kind of would want to have the node in. I kind of, I'm kind of partial to like hinterlands kind of vibes. They said, um, I can't remember which stream they said it on, but, um, I think it was the last one, maybe the one before that, um, talking about how you will have, um, or gosh, I'm drawing a blank on what it is called, not the raids, the sieges on the sieges, how there will be ones that actually have like sea sieges. So you get attacked from the coast by ships <laughs> because the castle is close enough to the, to the water. Yeah, so, I would like to see any like the coastal ones where like they have the harbor or the ship could attack. Yeah, so I was kind of interested in maybe building up one of those. <laughs> it would be really cool. Like I, I just, I, I think the idea of being able to attack, be able to be attacked land or sea is just really fun. Like there's, like, I can't think of a game where you actually can do that. Um, obviously there's not a lot of games where you can attack settlements, uh, especially in an MMO. Um, so yeah, I, I think that would be really neat. Any of the coastal ones, just trying to think like where I would want, like my action, like where, where I'd kind of vibe in and definitely like the idea, like, maybe. I definitely had the same thought nuclear tango said, or the forest below the volcano. I kind of want to be close to the that. volcano area. Cause that's kind of my jam. <laughs> it's all like the fire creatures, but, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. I really need to actually get like down into the world and explore a bit. Yeah. I kind of wish we could explore before developing the notes. <laughs> I know it would be really cool. I, that's the thing too. That's going to be really interesting is like, uh, we, we had touched on this before that when, when you first get in, it's going to be a completely different game. So the first wave of players that come into like a completely fresh server will have a completely different game experience than people who are coming in where there's already built up nodes. Because there is a good chance of all the starting zones will at least have some type of villages there, I would assume. They might not have the metropolis, but there will be like, you, you know, you have a starter zone and then you walk out because most of them too are gonna have, you don't have to start, from what I understand, you don't have to start where your race's zone is, but you, races will have a starting zone. So you might most likely will be coming in and you see, you know, as a brand new player, there's no one's touched the server. You're going to see nothing. A few months later, you're a new player that just learned about it. You're going to come in and then you're going to see like these built up nodes where you're going to be like, okay, you can come in, you can get horses and, and things like that. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You're literally influencing the development of the world over time. So it's very interesting that the first settlers coming out of Sanctus to Vera will have a completely different game experience than the players that have, you know, been there for six months. So the, or sorry, that they come in six months later. It's just going to be a completely different game to them. So I'm very, very excited for like that day one jumping in and playing. I do think too, um, something that has popped into mind is those of us who have the alpha and the beta um, are going to actually get to explore the world before, you know, we can kind of scout out where we actually want to be <laughs> before the actual it's game like launches. Yeah, you're gonna have like that gold rush of like, okay, it's it's launch day, run here. Right. So if the game launches and you weren't in the alpha or beta, and you just see a group of people running to the west, like probably follow them because you could make them <laughs> probably know <laughs> where the good note is. Yeah. <laughs> I do have I do have mixed feelings too about playing in the alpha and beta because like I don't want to spoil too much of myself, but also like I want to play it and touch it, like and be in there already. Uh, so this is the last ad. I've been snoozing ads, guys. So the next time it comes up, I'll just give a heads up so that we're not interrupting the conversation. Um, so yeah, like, like I, I don't want to kind of like ruin the game for myself by playing in the, the alphas and the beta. at least alpha two is like one thing, but the betas is going to be like one of those things where it's like, well, I, I know we'll get a clean, a clean start, but there's still that thing of like, I've kind of already touched this and I kind of know like some of the spots. So I'm hoping they find some way even to do the beta testing to not give us completely, like give us everything. Uh, it, it definitely is a, it's one of those like weird, like balancing things of like, how much do I actually want to play in the beta and alpha? And then am I going to want to repeat, which I, most likely I am. I just, I just know I played other betas where it ended up killing the game for me because like it released and I'm like, I've already done this. But I, I think it'd be a completely different thing too. Like once the game actually comes out, everyone's in there 
it's just I don't know. They, also, because we played a lot of because we have a uh, Conan Exile server that we that we run and we've done multiple like restarts on it. Where as long as the gameplay is fun, like I don't mind starting over. And that's like it's where the thing that right, I'm yeah. At. Um, yes. thank you guys so much for all, all the follows and the subs uh, during the stream. It's been awesome. Again, also thank you guys, uh, uh, Vertek and, and also Chippy or whoever led the raid. Also, thank you guys for coming and uh, hanging out. Golden feather. Yeah, golden feather. Um, um let's see. Gut score said, really excited for this game. I have faith in Steven and AOC since he is a gamer himself and knows what are good and bad systems. Yeah, uh, agreed entirely. Um, Steven actually has said that he's a giant whale when it comes to games, and so being such, he knows how bad that is for games, which is why he is so much against any kind of pay to win, um, which is extremely refreshing. Like, I think that's one of the things that's making me the most excited for this game, is the fact that it's not going to be pay to win, so any progress you make is, like, your own hard work. It's not buying your way through the game, <laughs> which, yeah, I like I, that. I do like, I do like that too, because I, I'm one of those people too, like if, if there's a way to get ahead, I, I might be enticed to do so. So I like the idea that it's being developed by someone who, who was that person and like knows like this is the pitfalls of things that ruin the games. It goes back to that earlier point of, would you do something, even though you know, it's going to ruin the game because it's available to you? And the answer is, yeah. Like if you think it's going to make you more competitive and you're one of those players, you're going to do it. Just like, you know, having XP boots, even though you know, it's going to ruin the gaming experience for yourself. Like it, it's nice that it's being that, it, that, that is going to be being designed around like that, that, that mindset to eliminate those things that give us those quick fix that remove the, the effort and, and the, the, maybe not the pride, but like the, the satisfaction that comes with seeing that effort put in and, and what you get out of it, because there's so many games now where you, it, it, there's so little effort that actually needs to be put into the game to get something good out of it. And there's this, right. there's this, um, I keep forgetting the name of the principle. I keep meaning to look it up, but there, there's a, there is a uh, psychological principle of the more something kind of sucks, like the more struggle that you have to put into it, the bigger or better the reward feels. So having a more challenging game, like the game should be like 80% suck in, in like a fun way. Like it, it should be like, they kind of like, um, I, I lift a lot of weights and like training sucks, but hitting a PR is awesome. So like that one, that one like thing that happens like twice a year, even you put all this time into it and you get that like huge rush of dopamine where like, God, this is awesome. And then you're like, oh, I gotta do it again. But like, hopefully we don't have hopefully that. Uh, Jamie, Jamie is happy for not even 10 seconds before he's like, okay, what's next? Yeah. I'm always looking for the next challenge. <laughs> um, but yeah. So like I with something I've noticed in a lot of MMOs is that it doesn't keep my attention because games tend to be too easy. And I want to make sure I, I can find some way to make it all these tangents linked together. Um, going back to flying mounts being rare and having a good amount of solo content, but not revolving game around it is that I think that it will lead to a more challenging game. And also the lack of having DPS meters, the lack of having add-ons, all those things lead to more challenging games because of one of the things that happens, if you look at like the history of wow, right, is raids before really weren't that difficult. Like you had some challenges, but one of the things they had to do is as things got harder and harder, the raids had to become more complex and convoluted because you could use add-ons to circumvent things. And that was the status quo. So like it's, it's in this prevent this, uh, perpetual thing of you find these ways to get around it. We got to make it find some way to add more complexity. You got to get around it, find more complexity. It, or you, they just give up and they're like, okay, here's just a cookie cutter thing and just do it. <laughs> so I, I think that stripping out all those conveniences will lead to a better game. And uh, we were watching this video essay about, it was talking about that during those times when we didn't have those, the MMOs were played a lot more. And now that we have, have a lot of that stuff in there, you don't see as much of a rise, but it also is like a social thing too, of like the rise of the internet and, and all those. So it, there's multiple things that are there. And it's going to be nice to see, like, does this model work in this day and age? And I think there are 
I think there's at least enough players that are making their voices heard that, yes, this is going to be something that's viable and that we want. Because I, I'm like, I know if I sit down and play a game now, if it has any type of convenience in there, I'm going to play that for about three months and not care about the game anymore. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's like the game only gets you so far before it just gets dull. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, I mean, we being admins on um, the code and servers we run, like we have access to the admin panel and stuff. And the game is super enjoyable when we're not cheating. And then the second we start like, you know, using the admin panel to like build things that are like better tier stuff like that like just because like we feel like doing that like it kind of you start using it and then you start abusing it and then suddenly the game isn't fun anymore because right, there's no more challenge <laughs> that's the fastest thing that kills code and exiles for me is when we start abusing the admin panel where it's like okay we're just gonna do this just to show people and then it's like next thing i know like i built like 10 different castles and i'm like all right, uh, different game. Because, <laughs> like, you remove the, the, the suck that it takes to make something awesome. Um, right. Which, don't get me wrong, like, it is nice to just, when you log in, that's just what you're doing is building, being creative. But like, on our actual characters that we like to play, um, not admin out, <laughs> like, it definitely starts to bring the, the boringness into the game right. as the challenge disappears. All right, so we're gonna I'm go back and look through some of the uh, some of the comments. Um, uh, Vertex was saying definitely wants to fully test all the tank classes, but I'm in a self debate on how far I want to go through the story and stuff. It does need tested, but spoil it for launch, so it's a tough decision. I definitely I am in that camp where it's like how much right. do I want to expose myself to? Um, let's see. Uh, so Ravan. Uh, was saying that my goal of being a mercenary here is going to be a refreshing experience than being the chosen one. Yes, I am so yes. looking forward to not having to be a goddamn chosen one. I just want to be an adventurer in a world. That's all I want to do. Like, I don't want to be a god's player. I mean, it'd be cool if I can kill a god, but like, I don't need those fucking story circled around that. Um, like, it, it's just, it's going to be nice just being an adventurer. Like, that's, I'm so looking forward to that. I just, I don't know why. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something so irritating about, I don't know if it's because like, I don't want a single player experience because I could get that somewhere else. And it's also very immersion breaking of like, again, I've talked, we've talked about this before. I just, I just basically killed a God and now I'm helping someone wrangle their sheep. And it's like, <laughs> there's a huge disconnect here, guys. Uh, and you killed a God and so did the 10 minutes. And so did to everyone else, right? <laughs> yeah. You guys got a minute, ask me a question. <laughs> and with the delay yeah <laughs> oh let's see sub chat only i think honestly i think at some point though yeah we, we will get there switch to sub only chat when we do the podcast just so we can actually like because there is a point where <laughs> everybody nice. starts typing and then <laughs> uh, i like I, honestly if i had to choose uh, apples for flavor bananas for fullness like if i want to be full apples because they go wonderfully Bears. with peanut butter Oh, but it is do too, but, Yeah. No, I know, but like apples and peanut butter, you can't get better than that. What's my Pierre yeah, bench? Oh, I just realized. Uh, so my best bench was 335 at, I think I weighed 205, something like that. I forgot. I forgot Vertex subscribe. <laughs> um, let's see. They get back from the ads and we're all talking about food. <laughs> um, my best, my best squat was 525. My best deadlift is 550. I think all those were around like 205. I've definitely, I've chubbed up a little bit uh, since we moved. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, lose a bit of my streamer bod um, in the next coming months. Well, we had, we had a nice home gym at our old house and then we moved here and there's the basement, the ceilings aren't high enough really for his rack. Yeah. So, I had the to... so we've been going to the gym, but then the time that he goes to the gym after work is really crowded and all the racks are usually taken so it's been like a yeah an and adjustment. it's taken by people who don't know how to lift and it just pisses me off um right they're they're curling in the squat rack yeah, dude. oh my god um uh annie do you do gym time like he does or nah i do it's it's tricky for me um i have a 
various health issues working against me, but I do try to get in the gym when I can. I've been having some muscle wasting lately, which has been very, very disheartening. But, um, so it sucks when I go into the gym and the weight feels heavier than it did or well, like the 20 pound dumbbell feels heavier than it did the week before. So I know, but it seems like you're kind of trying to figure that out a bit better. Um, and also there was a point, I think Kenny had like a 245 deadlift. Um, yes, I did years and years ago, two children ago, actually to be exact, um, in 2015, we competed in a powerlifting meet, uh, together and, um, I set the New Hampshire state record for squat bench and deadlift in the 181 raw powder weight class for women. Um, if I remember correctly, my bench was a measly 90, 95 pounds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> measly. That's still pretty decent. <laughs> And then my squat was 165 and my deadlift, technically I got 250 up. The, the record was set at 225, but when I did 250, um, they thought I hinged, but what actually happened was the bar got stuck on my thigh. So it kind of jolted when I pulled it up. So they thought I was hinging. So they gave me a red light, but I still count 250 as a win. I picked yeah, it, was it all the way up yeah. and put it down. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I've trained a lot of different women uh, for, for getting their deadlifts up over 200. Um, and like, I'm definitely kind of a, a psycho when it comes to lifting. So it, it's very interesting having, because you, you could like keep up with me at least between set, not obviously the same weight, but <laughs> keeping up with the intensity. So uh, it was, it was always really fun training with you and stuff like that. A uh, question, what is the Jamie and Lace story that led to the podcast creation? Um, good night, uh, Vertex. Like thanks, say, yeah, good night to Vertex. Thanks, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the raid. <laughs> um, so what is the Jamie and Lay story that led to podcast creation? So my lovely husband has very bad imposter syndrome. <laughs> and I've been telling him, because he is like a sponge when he hears information, it's like locked in his head and that he can retell it sometimes better than he read it. So I've been telling him forever that he needs to do something with that talent because that is not a talent that a lot of people have. Like, I definitely don't have that. It's, sometimes things get jumbled <laughs> for me at least. But um, so I've been trying to tell him for a long, long time that he needs to do something. And then, of course, like we're both passionate about Ashes of Creation. And we've seen like, I think it kind of was just like looking at other Ashes of Creation creators and like they're they're all wonderful and do things like uniquely in their own way but we were like you know what we honestly think that we can bring something different to the table <laughs> um something that's like unique in our way and is enjoyable to watch um and yeah so we kind of like we started streaming first which was something that we had been putting off doing and like talked about doing for probably about eight years um and then what, we were having so much fun streaming and like we found ourselves talking about Ashes of Creation a lot while we were streaming, <laughs> playing Conan, um, that we just decided that we would, on a random day when we didn't like the way the Renkai art looked. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I had a lot of opinions streaming, yeah. on, on certain things. And, and there was a thing too of like, you know, um, as be, discovery on Twitch is not very good. So there was a thing of like, well, how can we get discovered? How, how can we do this? And, you know, I, I tried making YouTube videos before that were very knowledge-based and it just, I don't like it. Um, I'm just not one of those people where I just want to be able to talk. Um, I'll get on that for a second, Nuku Tango. Um, so I, I just, I, I needed to find a way to what would work for me. So the idea was I love listening to podcasts. I love long form media. So the idea was we would, we would set up the podcast because I just, I didn't really like the amount of effort it was going to take to, uh, put into making the YouTube videos. Um, it, not that this doesn't have effort, but it's a different type of ed effort, right? There's a lot more editing that goes into making YouTube videos. There's a lot more scripting and coming up with those topics. And I just, I really love being able to talk with everyone, have those conversations they go off on different tangents. It's just how my brain works. You Something will come up and I just want, you know, we'll go down that rabbit hole and then we kind of try to come back. And it, it, it just, it seemed like it lended itself towards my skills a lot more. And I, I remember too, like, and it was like, really like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I, like, I have the, the, the imposter syndrome of, of like, I don't know if I have anything that, of, that, of, that is worth talking about or, or, or wondering if people would even care. Um, and then and it's like this, this anxiety of like, 
uh, of, oh, you know, what if, what if I fuck up or say something wrong or whatever? And the IMR2, like pushing her, like, I, I think this is going to be a really good growth thing because, you know, <laughs> it, it helps us both grow in, in talking and, and, and doing all these things. And it's been, honestly, I can't believe we're on our 11th episode. Like, it, it kind of struck me today where I was like, I can't believe that we, we're on 11 episodes already and we haven't missed a week since we started it. And like, like today, I'm, I've been sick. I, I, you know, kids give me the freaking plague. But like, I, I didn't want to miss out because it's so much fun being here with you guys. And, and I think we do kind of offer something different because we are very uh, discussion-based and conversation-based. And it, it's different than some of the other stuff that where people like, give out a lot of different knowledge, which is complete. I soak up that stuff too, but I just didn't want to be that show um, because I've, I've tried making YouTube channels on, on lifting. And it's like, man, I, I just don't want to teach people how to lift. I just want to talk about it. So I, I think that right. was really fun. Um, yeah. So we'll go back and look at some of these. Uh, Nuclear Tango was asking if I liked, so I liked the original Renkai. Like it, it was my favorite, uh, not, not my favorite look. Ugh. I do think that the original Renkai needed to have some type of Asian aesthetic added to it. It didn't really have that. Um, and and I, th I think there was some confusion early on with their first podcast of, of what was actually upsetting me, which I thought made it pretty clear, but maybe that someone just didn't quite understand, <laughs> is that I, I have a certain view in my head what orcs look like. Orcs are very, <laughs> you guys, it's always going to turn into orcs. And can't, every time someone asks me this goddamn question, I just can't help it. Like, I love orcs. They are my favorite race out of fantasy race out of everything. It is... It is so goddamn, like, I can't even express, if I could be an orc, I would be one. Like, it's, they're so fucking cool. They're fucking strong as shit. They're big as shit. And, and when the, when the Renkai came out, it was seeing the, the, the second wave, right? And they just looked to me more like hobgoblins. And it's not the Asian aesthetic. I think that would be really cool. Um, I just, they need to be, oh, Oh, no, no cursing. <laughs> okay, we're on the family. Oh, I can't, can't not curse when talking about orcs. I can't. Oh, the passion's going to get, I know. Uh, well, I'll, I'll cut it short for you. You really like orcs, and you didn't think the orcs that their latest model looked like represented what you thought an orc would look like. <laughs> yes, that's the that's short end of it. I won't go on a tie um, right now, but yes, we can. Okay, hang on. Let's see. Okay, so back to there. So Lord said, just so you know, I discovered you on Reddit, and then I saw... I'm going to be honest, I never use Reddit, but the one time that I did, I saw two new AOC streamers, so I joined your stream and you were doing a build-off at Conan. I remember that build-off. <laughs> that was fun. We need to do that again. Man, uh, Reddit, but... Reddit can be so mean to us when we go and post over there. I understand. Re Reddit really doesn't like when you do um, like self-promotion, and I, I get it. I, I understand you're on there. It can be pretty frustrating. But also, like, that's the thing is, like, there are audience members who may want to see the content that we have. And I really don't know how to do that other than saying, hey, guys, we have a YouTube video up or this is a thing. So I, I do, I am careful of when I, when and what I post. That was actually one of the reasons why we started cutting them up into different chunks and trying to make, instead of posting, someone was really upset that we had a three hour long video. And so, yeah, it's, it's a long form media. Like, I understand it's not for everybody, but they got really mad. And uh, so I did start chop, chopping them up into bits. I they just haven't, uh, I try to do that for now, but the last couple of episodes really haven't lent themselves to have different discussions and topics where that's why we kind of try to chop things up as, as we did. And you guys just really derailed it. And it's been awesome. I think that the heart, the, the live show is definitely, the, the heart of the show is the, the live show, right? Is coming out here and talking with you guys, doing all this. This is the best part. The podcast is great. And the YouTube's great, but I feel like those are more just ads for everyone to see us and, and come and hang honestly out. turning into the highlight of my week. <laughs> I, I love it. It is definitely oh. one of my favorite things to do. Uh, Let's see. So, Sky said, saw you guys first on YouTube. Um, and then also Nuclear Tango said, I came from YouTube. I watched everything in the AOC directory during work. And then your first video showed up in my recommended. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then Sky said, no, Lace is killing it, setting trends, haha, with the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> they said, my wife has the same headset, by the way. That's awesome. That's awesome. Honestly, I, I, love, I love these headphones. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the pink one. And I kind of had a little bit of virus remorse and was like, maybe I should get the black because it'll match more clothes. But the pink has been working out very well, and I love it now. <laughs> um, let's see. 
uh, Overthrow asked you to have any specific archetypes you want to play and what goals in game are you looking to pursue? So we've answered this question a few times now. Um, so for me, the archetypes I'm going for is Ranger and Summoner, and I'm looking to do a Beastmaster. I think that's what I'm going to try out first. Um, I'm still having... I... Sorry. Oh, go. go ahead. <laughs> My goals in the game is I just want to be, like, the best animal husbandress. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, like, breed some really badass mounts. <laughs> Does it, for me, I haven't really... I don't really have any goals, per se, quite yet. Um... Oh, guys. Awesome. Thank you. We, uh, oh, I didn't have a challenge set yet, but we, we hit our, our 10 out of 10. Um, I'll have to think of something. Aren't we doing the chubby bunny? No, that was for something else, but maybe we will do the chubby bunny, um, tomorrow. We can maybe do then that. We can, we can both do it. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> oh we'll man. It. Thank you guys. I'm getting so distracted. Um, so I'm not really sure. I know what archetype I want to start with, which is tank. I just don't know what the other, other classes that I want what class I want to play yet. Cause I, I do love playing very savage classes. Uh, in, I don't, I don't know. None of the names really speak to me yet. So I, I really need to try that stuff out. Um, and then as for what do I want to pursue? I'm not, I'm not really sure yet. I'm just, I'm just looking forward to exploring, I guess. Like, I just, I just really want to get in the world in. He wants, uh, he wants to find himself. <laughs> I do. I want to find myself in the game. I just, I want to, I want to just explore and, lose myself in a game and hopefully it's it's a new home to play in all right and then um Penn said you guys are very personable and annie's infectious smile <laughs> and jamie's take on things are great you're both a great team thank you very much thank you really appreciate, I appreciate that. that very much um <laughs> daryl says okay jamie wants orc mama hello okay. <laughs> um, way to paint, paint annie, it's way to paint annie green but see how that goes i did get um Stay tuned because I got a cosplay costume that is coming in the mail. Well, I got a bunch of different pieces rather to a costume I'm going to put together for Halloween. So stay tuned. Check out my Twitter and my Instagram if you want to see the pictures. Oh, no. I, them. <laughs> I just noticed that Nuclear had gifted five subs. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that. What's up, Zillin? Oh, I know. <laughs> Zillin, I just want to let you know that I think you were probably one of the first ashes of creation um content creators that i that i originally saw i i, I think it was prior before even finding narc so it is really cool to have you in my chat that is it's very sweet oh <laughs> that's so, so cool uh let's see ninja worm said your long youtube videos are what brought me here i love having something like this to listen to while i play some games i've never been much of a twitch person and this is pretty much the only thing i come here for right now that's awesome i really <laughs> love hearing stuff like that <laughs> it's very cool it's, um, that's a thing too i kind of feel that too because i really am not when it, when it comes to like content i'm really a big youtube youtube guy or podcast guy i don't really ever right. do a lot on twitch this was this was actually a big learning curve too and i don't know I don't know if that also is like helps with our content because uh, I, I know like when you see YouTube, a lot of the YouTube stuff, you tend to be higher energy and it's hard to promote that for throughout a whole, a, a, an entire like stream and everything. Uh, unless you're Jamie with his ADHD. <laughs> right. Unless you're me. <laughs> and you, after you turn off the cameras and everything, then you crash and realize, wow, I talked for three hours straight <laughs> and barely breathed the whole time. So it, it is, it is, um, because that was one of the challenges too, that, right? That, that people were saying that people who are on YouTube have a hard time crossing over. And it's like, man, if I actually were to sit down YouTube videos, those would be so, <laughs> those would be very energetic videos. But I definitely like uh, the, the way that we're doing it. So I don't know where it's going with that. Ignore what I just said. I just, uh -huh. brain just shut off halfway through that. Uh, Zillin said, you guys are killing it with the content. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Let's see. All right, try to over, over gonna enlist to raise. I got to the end. All Overthrow's right. gonna enlist you to help raise the dragon for them one day. Yes, I saw that. I will. I will raise it well, and I'll take it out for its walks and runs, whatever <laughs> need to have good stats. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Nuclear said, if Annie ends up on my server, she will be my go-to. I'm gonna let you guys all know which server I'm gonna be on, so I can. <laughs> of my little animal empire. <laughs> and we'll all have to be tamers and just bring our really cool creatures so we can all get awesome mounts. Yes. 
So it, it looked like because it's so far off from what we originally talked about, it did look like everyone is, it, it more more or less is in favor of having mount uh, flying mounts be a, a rare drop or being a rare thing. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of weird about it when I first heard it. I was like, oh, because like I was we, like, I'm never gonna have a flying mount. But at the same time, like they're not gonna be. Yes, as long as gliding mounts are awesome, I love gliding mounts. I can't. We I didn't really see did. Didn't, I'm sorry if I cut you off. Um, oh, you're fine. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if, how many people said that they played Dark Age or not because I, I couldn't talk during that time because of Lord. Um, I can't believe you had 20,000 points to spend for that. Uh, that I need spend on that. <laughs> I know. Jamie needs to shut the fuck up for like 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, so it, what was I saying? Gliding mounts in that game are awesome. Like when it, when it comes to, why are people counting? What did I miss? Wait, why are we doing this? You guys are confusing oh. me. Why? Oh, man. You guys are just trying to make things go off the rails. I'm never going to win against chat. Uh, Keep doing it because I was starting to get bored. So this is good. What time are we at, guys? It's like 11. Why is it happening? Um, gliding is so underrated. Yeah, no. Gliding is extremely fun. All I hear is ding, like, ding, is ding. ding. Oh. About. Yeah. <laughs> um, normally, I don't have that on. You know what? That's the thing. Normally, when we do the podcast, I don't put the chatty on so we can hear the dings. My God, why are you guys doing this to me? <laughs> this is going to be the worst podcast. Oh I thought last God. time we were so tangented, but like, you guys all know, you know the drill now. This is not like, the end of the show, no. It's I know, no one gets that far. <laughs> Anyone who gets that far, like in the podcast, you guys are you guys are true MVPs. I love that you guys also come out and hang out. Like, it is awesome. <laughs> it's just I agree. Annoying. But yeah, a lot of people haven't experienced gliding. And that's the thing is in arcade, it is so much fun. Like, I did not miss having flying mounts. as Because gliding mounts also had the ability to kind of boost you and stuff. And you could catch, like, you couldn't catch waves, but you could kind of ride out and hit it again. And it, it you could get really, really far. So depending on how they do gliding, it may not be all that bad. Um, yeah, draft. So not having flying mounts that you can just go up, go down, be, be done with content. Like, I, I just feel like it really breaks games. But having a gliding mount that you're going to be able to use and kind of coast over to it is a completely different feel. And I don't think that's as damaging to the game if as having dedicated flying mounts. All right. It was difficult okay, to get through with all that. Yeah. Why are we up to 22? <laughs> why, why are we even counting? Um, Gutsor said way back, you said how many did Arcade have? So I typed one here. So you asked a question. Oh, <laughs> okay. So you guys answered now. <laughs> just... I see what we did here. That's funny. We're counting to break it. Now it's just a game. <laughs> um, I, I did notice too that uh, it was, Daryl, didn't you say you were going to bet? Wait, shut up. Hang on. I remembered what I wanted to say forever ago <laughs> about the flying mounts. So I She doesn't do know think, get that excited. I do think it would be really cool. Um, I saw somebody mention it, that in a future expansion, of course, um, if there were airships, so like, you could do instead of like a normal caravan you could have like an airship and then the airship has like a favorable winds buff or something so people's gliding mounts can actually fly in a certain circumference around the airship and then that way like friend or foe can like come in and like fuck you up <laughs> on an air mountain battle i think there it's might a, be it's just it's a stretch but i think that'd be really cool <laughs> so instead of having just so you'd have uh you'd have your land ships and your your sea ships um i think there are going to be some airships there for like travel between depending on what buildings are in the metropolis is being able to travel that way but i don't think they're ever going to give per people personalized airship they may though in a future expansion i know, you know, I know. 40 years from now when it's yeah. 20 years from now they're like, all right, guys, we need something. Airship. I don't see it happening, but like that was like a thought that popped into my head. So I was like, that'd be freaking fun. <laughs> Air battles. Oh my God. Oh, well, let's see. Okay. So Daryl got called out because apparently he was supposed to go to bed an hour ago. He's supposed to go to bed an hour. He's just addicted. He just can't. <laughs> um, let's see. Sponsor. And said, uh, 
Okay, Penn said, but yeah, we're all going to be able to glide and it's going to be faster-ish and it's going to glide further than people expect. It will be very cool and fun and very close to a flying mount. Yeah, yeah I gliding can't wait to try that out. Did you, ever, did you ever get the try out gliding in Arcage? I, I did, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sky says we are just unleashing chaos. What <laughs> number are you guys up to? 35? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we finally started. I know. Or like unlacing. Uh, so so Daryl had brought up too that we run a community night. Um, so every Saturday night, we've been playing Dead by Daylight. There may be other games that get rotated in there, but that's been our go-to. Um, did you you probably brought that up because you got the, the, the cosplay that you're going to be doing? Speaking of which, we're going to get some Daryl, you need to go to bed, and he's like, I can't or <laughs> drive. Well, I can't turn it off. I'll be working on some more merch. I, I got to think of uh, what, how we're going to oh. do it, what we're going to do. So good news. Um, now that I passed my exam and don't have to spend every other spare minute of my day studying for said exam, I actually am going to work on some artwork for our, our brand. So I don't know when that will be done. <laughs> um, but so yeah, everyone needs like, to get on top of it. I work on, I know, like I, I really can draw quite well. Um, I'm normally pretty humble about it, but yes, I admit that I can draw <laughs> fairly it well. It would be pretty simple. Um, you can get your designs on there and we can actually make some t-shirts. That would be sweet. Yeah. So I'll figure something out and then we'll sell it. Uh, Gloomhaven? I'll have to check that out. One second. Yeah. Um, no, so I didn't. Said, Did you make the logos on here? Those are awesome. No, unfortunately, so they're they're just placeholders. Yeah, yeah. currently they're, they're placeholders. They are from um, Neverwinter, the MMO. Uh, so currently they're just placeholders. I, I was trying to get some artwork done and it, it is not going uh, swimmingly, but those will eventually be replaced for personalized ones. Um, I do have some, I, I kind of like have some AI ones that I've been working on because uh, I, I do some of that. Um, what is it? The, uh, oh, what is it? the AI generators or whatever the, the artwork. So we do have some that I'm, I may end up using. Uh, currently they're just placeholders because what, what I would like to do is have because I, I tend to play barbarians and tanks i want to have one that kind of represents that and then annie tends to play druids and, and rangers and have one that kind of represents that so if you guys yeah you guys have my AI generated art that's awesome I, I try to put a few of those up there um but if anyone does know um an artist that could make that kind of stuff uh, reach out to me on discord and let me know because that would be awesome i would definitely like to get some personalized ones before yeah, Neverwinter sees it and tells me to take it off. Logos. But I can do, like, artwork. I don't know if that makes sense. We could, you um, could make, like, some <laughs> character tees. Yes. Uh, Nuclear Tango said, are those pictures behind Annie done by her? Yes. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of those. I keep wanting to say sip and strip. Damn it. Every single time. Um, those paint night. Sip and paints. That's what it is. We got rid of that game. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um... It was one of like those paint nights you go to where like it's like kind of a whole group of people and they all paint like, you know, um, I kind of do my own thing though. The, um, the one with the birds that was actually supposed to be a dock with two chairs on it. And I was like, nope, doing a branch with birds on it. And then the, the one with the deer, um, the original picture, the deer was not in it. I was like, I'm adding a deer, <laughs> but, um, yeah, those, if you haven't ever done those, those are fun. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm cracking up. Nuclear Tango. So uh, Bergen just, just joined and Nuclear Tango just typed act normal. Someone knew us here. Oh my God. <laughs> so towards the end of the stream, um, things definitely get uh, very crazy. And uh, for some reason, we were up to counting to 51. Uh, earlier, we were having a nice discussion about uh, solo gameplay and MMOs and talking about uh, some lore in the cosmetic crossover or changeover. And uh, also flying mounts and the positive and negatives uh, in MMOs, but uh, now it's this. <laughs> yeah, now it's devolved. Now it's, it's just devolved into Benny's favorite part of the podcast, aka when I get bored. No. <laughs> yeah, when Annie gets bored and then just starts going off the rails with it. Um, <laughs> I know we're just gonna we are just gonna go with it. Oh, jeez. If I just start counting with them, fifty-six. <laughs> you guys definitely made this one really. Wait, what if we all get 10 Ks so we can mute them when we're playing Dead by Daylight when I'm a killer so they have no communication? De oh, Lord, mean. honestly, for someone who does who likes to play Survivor more, you're you're an, a great killer. So you know who else is a great killer? You when you're playing uh, 
<laughs> Huntress. Only on the Huntress. Part. Dude, it's so funny because Daryl gives you so much shit about playing Huntress. Meanwhile, when he plays plays Doctor, he kills Every everyone just as fast. Yeah. He just toys with us the whole time. <laughs> I know, me having to edit this. Joke's on you guys. The, the editor that I use gives me an entire script so I can just pick out when we start going off the rails. So it won't be as difficult. No, it literally will take me the next like three hours. For some reason, the streams keep getting close to like three hours long because we originally were like, they'll just be an hour long. And then, uh, and then we're like, okay. So, but then we did it and like the first one was like two hours long. We're like, oh, that was kind of long. Now they're all like three hours long and I have to, it takes forever to fucking edit them. And honestly, the hardest part is just doing the crossfade transitions for the video. For doing the podcast, it's actually not that difficult. Um, Van said, in all serious, Jamie Chaos, the reason how I found, uh, the reason, or sorry, how I found you guys is through a random YouTube suggestion and giving it a go since there was nothing, uh, nothing new AOC content and watching your live streams there until, uh, until now. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for that. Hey, really appreciate that. Coming and hanging out. Um, hence that I posted my wife's drawing in Discord. You need an art tangent topic section. Oh, I think that would be have- awesome. I, yeah, that we do have a show us your creations for that, but um, in, in the Conan one, but not for. I did. I did take a look, and that looks really good. Hold on, we're gonna pull that up on stream. I like how she does the anime style. That's something I've never really been able to master. Is <laughs> that kind of style? I don't really draw people too often, though. I usually. Oh wow! Like Holy shit! Animals and dragons and stuff. That is really cool. That is great. <laughs> I really like that. Hour. That's really cool. All right. Uh, Gutsor said, I just stumbled on you guys here on Twitch by accident. Glad I found you. Glad you're <laughs> Well, thank you for you. coming. Yay. <laughs> I like the, the people who stumble in from the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out with us. It seriously is like, if, if you listen to the podcast or the YouTube, like it, it's awesome. Like I really appreciate all that stuff too, but I, I really feel like the heart of our show is at the, the live show, especially towards the end when we get to kind of cut loose a bit. Sometimes I do cut out some of this stuff. Sometimes I leave it in there. We've been talking to about starting another podcast where we can just have our, our, our regular conversations and, and stuff. And you guys can get to know there is like a, a, a part of me that is a bit, um, uh, <laughs> apprehensive about having some of these conversations because we, I listen, we, 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 we have had a lot of fun times and it, it, it is of like, how much of that do I want people to actually know about? Yeah. Right. I know. I definitely think it would be better separated him from like affiliation with ashes of Grey. right i don't know how many people would come over to the other stream and be like i'm never listening to you guys again yeah they're like sorry it's just our life so if you guys really like us you'd probably like that if you like ashes of creation it might not be for you <laughs> um but yeah I, I know we've considered having that other show i honestly have con- almost considered having multiple different shows because i never shut the fuck up and i know annie will be along the ride to do whatever and I also love talking with you too. Like it's, it's so much fun. Like I think that too, like the uniqueness of that, of being a streamer that has a co-host or like we co-stream together, like it, it makes it that much better because like you, you know, instead of just having to sit here and you're constantly trying to think of like, what can I say? You have bounce other things off of your partner and then the chat and then everyone it just devolves into chaos because there's so many people talking. Yeah, I definitely am not um, a good monologuer. So <laughs> I would not be here if it was not. Or Jamie, do it with me. <laughs> yeah, 20 hours a day and give up work. Honestly, dude, I sleep about four hours a day, so I could probably do that. It would be really fun to, to be able to, like, um, host those and, like, just host different podcasts and, and stuff like that and see, especially, like, see who kind of crosses over and, like, enjoys different things. <laughs> uh, uh, Bergen said, LOL, it's my kind of show. If I were to, sorry, it's cats moving faster than I can read it. There we go. If I were to have one, it would just be a stream of consciousness. See, that's awesome though. Like I, I like people just talking and like whatever flows out in, in those different conversations. Like uh, there's so much scripted content and, and things out there. And it's nice to see. And I think that's why, why so many people like Twitch too, is you are just seeing people be kind of raw and, and, and things just kind of coming out. Obviously some people play a bit of a character more than others or, and, and things like that. But it is, it's really cool just seeing people have conversations i i love it that's one of my favorite podcasts um is is last podcast on the left and they have a a completely different segment where it's their um 
uh, side stories. And it's just two of the co-hosts, normally there's three. It's just two of them having conversations and, and kind of going off the rails. <laughs> it's just so fun. Let's see, seriously, juggling through Paradox, stream about Ashes, and after that, it's uh, Golden Feather Tavern, then last to you guys a Friday. So it's Ashes content day for me. That's awesome. I didn't even realize that we had it lined up that way. Um, we, we originally moved into... Uh, we originally moved to Fridays just because it was a lot easier for us to manage. Were we effort influenced by Paradox? No. Um, I had seen some of Jolan's stuff, but I, I really, I, I just, I like, I watched some of his, um, what is it? His uh, Arcade stuff. What, what are we doing? What did I admit? Did someone mess? Oh, there's two 83s in there. I see it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Skyx, you're out. You gotta sit down. <laughs> you can't, you can't die anymore. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I, I, I do like long form media, but I, I just hadn't really watched a lot of Jolan stuff. I have seen some though. Um, but yeah, it, there wasn't, there wasn't influence there, but it, it, uh, I don't know where we're going with this. His Ashes 101 are good for information. I think that was a thing too, is there, I think there was a lot of information stuff in that. It's not that I know everything, but like, I'm trying to think. I, I don't consume as much. I like I, I guess for me, when when I'm on YouTube specifically, I do like kind of like that mid range stuff. So I do get what people don't want to watch a three hour video. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't tend to do a lot of long form media on YouTube. Sometimes I do. Asmin Gold, I definitely watch a ton of his stuff, but it's never like video game related. I will. I tend to watch a lot of his stuff that has nothing to do with video games. Um, like when they when he was covering the the, the giant death trial. Yeah. Trial. Yeah. I no, I watched a ton that, of that like, religiously. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I have seen some of his, um, and a lot of it too is just like I don't know if he had it in a podcast form, I probably would have listened to it. Um, I know I had started my first foray into like actual long-term following before watching some of the narc stuff was um some orgs podcast uh, the ashes pathfinder i listened to that a ton and um and honestly now that we're doing our own content i really don't watch or listen to a lot of people and it's mainly because i don't want to be super influenced i might kind of peek at like what someone's doing but i, I want to i kind of what i like doing is i like to find things that are outside of ashes or what other games are doing or other people are doing. And I kind of like to pull that in to what we're doing. So that way I'm not specifically only talking about ashes, but incorporating how those conversations could happen revolved around ashes. Right. <laughs> Stop being sick. I <laughs> know. Sorry. I, I think that was a thing too, um, is that he did have a lot of critical, critical takes. And I, I just didn't really align myself or feel the same way. So the, a lot of the stuff that I had, I had watched, like it, it didn't really line up with, with like what I was thinking. So it, it was, that was kind of the thing too, is that it's just a lot of his takes I didn't really agree with. So uh, one of the reasons too, why, why I don't watch too much of it, because, um, like when it comes to tab targeting, I, I prefer hybrid. I honestly wish they would just get rid of tab. Uh, I know there's other people that are upset with that too. And I, I don't want full action either. I just, I love hybrid. So shots fired guys. Like anyone wants to jump on me in the comments. Um, it's my, the Bergen said, yes, right there. can't wait to get another round of Steven interviews. Um, maybe try to get him on tangents. That That's would be kind sweet. Of like our, our big goal. I think that is currently <laughs> um, the MMO I'm playing is trying to get Steven's attention of, can we get him on our show? <laughs> like that that would be very very cool i would love honestly i would love to what what do you mean 100 what is 100 for a poll <laughs> what is the poll should i should i tell them that the number that they end on is going to be how many more days until we actually get to play the alpha oh don't say alpha that two. let's room why are we at 91 what just happened why did we go back because <laughs> they skipped uh, pen skipped. In the oh, I see. He's got a 90. <laughs> You're just messing up everything now. Um, but yeah, it would be amazing to have um, Steven on. Like that, honestly, one of the things that would be really, really, I know that's a thing too. Like I, I see Steven go on his tangents. I think we could have some awesome conversations. I feel like there could be a lot of conversations that end up not really being about ashes. Um, oh, absolutely. But also I feel like if any podcast could potentially get leaks, I feel like our tangents might be able to do it. So I would love to have Steven on just to see, see if we could get there. 
Well, yeah, if you got, honestly, the thing that you guys could do for us is to like, comment, share all that cool stuff and, and help us get known and, and everything and, and suggest it and try to get those, get us in front of uh, Steven's eyes and things like that. Right. That would be really cool. How big Ashes of Creation got strictly through word of mouth because they haven't done any advertising. <laughs> It's all been word of mouth, so yeah. So we need we the cult to do the same for us to try and get Steven on our show. So we need the cult of chaos and the Legion of Lace getting out there and, and spreading that word. And uh, yeah, <laughs> um, you would get too passionate just spilling the deep. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I could imagine the conversation between myself and Steven just like kind of like pushing each other further, like, yeah, 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 no, this too. And then, and just and then accidentally like having a big drop, and it's like, I'm sorry, Steven. I'll cut that. <laughs> I'll cut it out. Yeah. There's a, I feel like secret. <laughs> this is the thing is, is Steven seems so genuine, genuine as a person. And, and so I don't know, it's just the vibe that I get from Steven is that he would be so fun to just sit down and talk with. Like I, it's just his personality, the passion for the game. He just seems like a genuine person. And like, like I'm so pumped to for for extra life. Like I love watching their their streams and everything they do there. And I think that's an awesome cause. I think we, we're gonna try to do something along with them, not with them obviously, but alongside that, and, and try to do our own thing. I don't know if we'll be able to do the 24 hour, but it'd be it'd be pretty fun. We might be <laughs> able to in November. Yeah, I think it's in November. The thing though is, I is Daryl finally going to bed? Good night, Daryl. Maybe guys, this is gonna be a bitch to edit. If we ever do a 24 hour stream though, I will legit fall asleep. No, no, you will. It will it'll be a sleep stream. I can't stream. stay up that late. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it'll just be, I can't believe you guys are still doing the goddamn numbers. This is fucking funny. Daryl, go to bed. You're going to get sucked in again. I agree. Yeah. So that, that right there, the, the video of Steven talking to Asmin Gold is I was already pretty vested. Like I, I was like, okay, I want to get the alpha. I want, I want to do this stuff. After hearing that, there was no doubt in my mind of how genuine Steven was and how passionate he was about this game. The fact that he could just pull everything out of his head and talk about it. And so quickly, like it, it was insane. Like you just don't see that with, with another, with like people that are in that position, right? The, the creative director of that, like, I mean, maybe some creative directors, but you, you just, and for a gaming company, I've never seen that. I've never seen someone who is, un, unless it's a smaller studio, which I guess they were at the time, like you just don't see it. Um, so are you going to bed? Uh, Gutsor said I was comparing the interview Asmin Gold did with Blizzard compared to Steven, and it seemed like Blizzard were just was just like, "Why am I here?" Exactly. That's what I've said that multiple different times. I haven't mentioned them outright, but yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Like because <laughs> like even because uh, we we talked about we when they were talking about Dragonflight, dude, all that stuff was so goddamn scripted. It was painful to watch. Did you guys see the mobile game thing? That stupid, like, the, where they're, whatever they were doing. Oh, my God. It was so cringy. It was so goddamn cringy. And, like, you could tell this was just a game they were putting out. And it's, oh, my God. It just, I, I can't believe I even watched the fucking trailer for that. You guys remember the game I was talking about that probably is already dead? <laughs> uh, Overthrow said, yeah, usually developers have a really regulated video that they put out where they insist, uh, we are gamers, too. It is much more upfront and real. Absolutely. And that's what's so refreshing about it. Right. Like, just because there is that transparency. <laughs> you still feel damn with you fucking. <laughs> oh, my I'm not God. There. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, you guys are way too much. You guys um, are hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the fuck? God. I fucking knew it. <laughs> you guys are going to make me start co uh, coughing now. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Daryl, to fuck Ben. <laughs> we're we're all trying to look after you, Daryl. You need to stop counting numbers. I think I think the best part about this too is that not only are we making friends with you guys, but you guys are making friends with each other. <laughs> oh my God, I'm in tears. Or friends. <laughs> you speak your game. Oh shit, Daryl, apologize. Fucking, hold on. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I'm dead. okay. No, Daryl just fucking. Oh my god, he's not gonna. He's not gonna speak, but he's gonna freaking. <laughs> oh, Daryl, that's right. That's right. Lord's Lord's a moderator. He's Lord's gonna. He's gonna, 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 gonna ban you from speaking. 
<laughs> so if we have no friends, it's Friday night. We're, that's oh, oh Daryl got put in a timeout for six hundred seconds. If Daryl is oh no, <laughs> Daryl, if you're still there after six hundred seconds, you're becoming a moderator. <laughs> my God, I, I will award you moderator. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, I don't even remember where we were with anything. This has been the best fucking podcast yet. It's just going to be people. Didn't, it, you, didn't you just say it was the worst? It podcast? is. It's the worst, best podcast we could put out. You guys literally have me in fucking tears right now. <laughs> I know. <don't>, podcast. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> have we even talked about the fucking game in the last like 20 minutes? I don't think we have. We oh. talked about Steven. I think that counts. I know. If he, I'm, I'm saying like if, if Daryl is still there he, and he works, <laughs> he's still feel <guilty>. terrible. <laughs> yeah lord's like you better not say that because now he's gonna stay up forever <laughs> oh my god it was supposed to help him not encourage him <laughs> i feel like the 600 seconds was harsh how long is that it's um is that 10 minutes we need like we need like aa meetings for bedtimes we're staying up too late too <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta do, go out and jump on discord and start yelling at little lord <laughs> oh jesus he can't go to bed for 10 minutes <laughs> he's probably so mad <laughs> he probably is oh my god we have a new hour food count. Let's go. I know it's awesome. I've um, been noticing that too. God, we're going to go past three hours. Um, oh, Jesus. Okay. Maybe we're after the ashes now. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. We can just, I don't know. Cause it's not going to cut the thing. Right. I, I don't remember. I, does it download it as one stream? Anyway, whatever. I'll figure it out. Oh no. <laughs> Lord says he's in the dead by daylight voice chat <laughs> to go fight him. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys are fucking hilarious. Just, just turn into the dead by daylight. Oh my god, he's actually in there. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking Holy funny. shit. Okay. Um yeah, I got nothing left. I'm I was just waiting to see if um Daryl popped. I know. Over. Now we have because I was kind of getting close to like, damn, I might be ready for bed, but now you guys now I have to stay on for 10 minutes to see if Daryl still now, comes back. I'm then. awake though. Yeah. Yeah, Annie's awake because she. So towards the end of the stream, Annie gets really bored, so she'll start causing chaos because normally it's my job to start with chaos, and then she gets very chaotic. I unlace. And she unlaces the chaos, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, as she gets later on, when it gets more bored towards the end, it starts devolving. Uh, other people are going to come in this and be like, why the fuck am I, what, what is this? All right, they're going to be like, the hell? We just, have <laughs> the to make, we, just, we just have to make sure that we talk about ashes every so often. <laughs> Have I thought about right, any religious battles? Here's a question. Yes, I have. Um, but I don't know what gods we have to follow. I don't want to. So. No, because what? religion is a cult. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> Goodbye to any uh, religious followers we have. Um, yeah, we, I don't, we don't really know too much about religions in the game. I'm actually really excited to find that out too. Um, because I would love I would love to be, yeah, if the gods creation. I don't want to follow a good god like if if the, if i am going to follow one um i either want it to be kind of bestial or you no know, I'll, I'll put your question in the forum what was your question in the forum wait there are six primary religions as well as tolar yeah i actually would like to know what that i hope i hope they have the dirketo with the <laughs> you don't want to be fired wait hold on what voice that text I'm afraid to click that because I think it might disconnect me from this call. Yeah, hold on. Click on that. Am I not supposed to? Is there text in there? Hold on. I can't do it on my. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I, I don't want to switch over into different things. Um, there we go. This is helpful. Uh, so I know we're going to have different religions, but we don't know exactly like what they are, right? Sorry. Are you talking about <laughs> Cult of Stevenism in the game soon. That's awesome. I know. Honestly, sometimes I think that um, Ashes of Creation is just a way for Steven to create a cult because he, he would be a very charismatic and kind cult leader. And I I will follow the cult. I was going to say that earlier when everybody's like, he's so great. <laughs> it's like, he's a cult leader. No. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I will I will join the cult of the sandal as long as the game's good. <laughs> um, yeah, but so when it comes to the gods, I'm hoping that there is some type of void god or something that you can you, you can follow or something like i don't want to have to be stuck to playing like a a good like i said like I, sometimes i, I kind of like playing like an anti-hero so it all depends on like what the god stance are like if there's a god of war or something or a god of you know it all depends um 
because do we have what were we need a clip um yeah like i gotta see like the actual because i know we don't know too too i, I remember i looked into it because I, I was i'm kind of a lore whore to be honest so i was i was going through and looking and yeah we've got um shoal was god of truth hope was his resna goddess of fate was norlin um god's creation which is the phoenix avatar goddess of love um and the sphere of influence of the three other gods has not yet to be revealed so i would like to know whoever becomes a dwarven god will have my axe and shield that's awesome yeah like i i would i just want to have i don't know it's it's four minutes left it's still daryl <laughs> please tell me you're holding out i just i want to oh my god it's so fucking funny um hey jamie what <laughs> porcelain god what did you pull the cat out oh my god i am cutting that from the goddamn He's sorry a christ i told you it's getting late <laughs> it's getting very late uh when do we think we'll hear about clerics i'm actually kind of hoping that this stream is going to show us um the necromancer which would be a mix between the cleric and the summoner i don't i uh, get pulled over overwatch with the boys oh whatever that's fine um i actually i, I think we're going to see the cleric soon i think we're going to see summoner I would, I would be, let's see. I think we'll either see summoners, this, God, I need to collect myself. I think October, we're going to either see summoners or the cleric, and then we'll either start seeing the bard and, um, what's the other one? What haven't we seen? We need to see cleric. Uh, no, we have, we have, summoner, we have summoner. summoner, bard, and cleric. I think we'll see those three before the end of the year. Rug will probably be last. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, oh, now you guys are talking about Overwatch. We we haven't played that yet. That was that's one we could probably do community night with. Um, uh, you're gonna play Rogue. Um, they did kind of showcase it a little bit, I think, with uh, not really, but they did show the 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 daggers at least. Um, and then there there has been some uh, rest in this dictatorship. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god, Lord! I think being a mod has gone to your head um it's, everyone's going on tangents uh he's just waving around that big <laughs> big mod stick um <laughs> hydrate oh my god and daryl has got to win. i just see i just seen community night tomorrow it's probably just him being so pissed during the whole goddamn thing toward he is going to target excuse me he is just going to target you the entire fucking time we're playing ten by ten. hey he might actually kill you first. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> might, he's just going to straight up just focus on, he's going to tunnel Lord the entire time. What um, just happened? <laughs> oh my God, you guys are so funny. Um, gonna be some I was talking about out. something. <laughs> oh my God. We were talking about religion. Yeah. So I would like to, did, wait, did I finish that conversation or not? Um, uh, but yeah, when it, when it comes to the, the religion, like, I really no, hope we were that... talking about the cleric. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a, another sidestep from that. But yes, I think that we, I really, really, really hope that we see this, the necromancer. I think we, they can just skip showing us the, the pure like summoner and just go full necromancer for spooky season. And because that's, I think who they're going to show, cause right. That's the cleric and the summoner. Mix. That's the clerics and summoner mix and they keep, and it's spooky season. <laughs> it's spooky season. They've been shown as zombies and I'm pretty sure necromancers would be able to raise zombies. And they talked about how they have a cool animation with them coming out of the ground. So it would be cool to see them circle back to that. Um, how much longer does Daryl have in, 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 uh, his, his jail time. Is Daryl still here? Can we feel Daryl? We'll find out in a few seconds. <laughs> We're all just silently waiting. Ah, there it is. Oh, there it is. Hell yeah. You know I can't not kill Lace first. Oh Daryl. Oh my God. You're you're getting mod status, dude. <laughs> that's the first thing he says after a time. I love that. That's a... <laughs> Daryl, you really need to go to bed. Oh my God. First thing. Not even him yelling at Lord. It's him saying that he needs to kill me first. <laughs> that is freaking hilarious. <laughs> now now Daryl's not going to bed. All right. I think that should have worked. So let's see. That's uh, so goddamn funny. <laughs> you Lord. Now there's going to be like a bump. Daryl's the favorite mod of the people they have spoken. <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't know if mods can mute mods, can you? 
Let's see, as much as I would like to see that, they will reveal all eight archetypes before any of the classes. Most likely. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> the YouTube title, episode 11, The Rise of Daryl. <laughs> I was going to say we should just name it whatever number was the last number. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> no context. No like, context at all. 113 or whatever it was. <laughs> like, what this is 102. Oh my God. All right, guys. I think we're probably getting pretty close to where we're going to need to wrap this up. Um, I'm going to need to get some sleep to try to actually get better. Oh my God. 100. That I'm getting. Wait. I know. I saw it. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go again. You guys want to just go down now? Oh, everyone's messing it up. I'm just I gonna think start you guys trying to get loopy. I think so too. I think everyone's going on the ride with us. All right. Uh, um. So did I answer the question about the religion? I think so. And then yes. So I don't know. I wasn't listening. Uh, I need an adult. Is there any adults? Um. Get him on the break. <laughs> you guys are fine. This is so fun. I think Necro is summoner first. Is it summoner first? I still feel like they, it, is, it has a potential. So have I decided to be a pirate for sh uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, like, I, I think it'd be really fun to play the pirate. And, like, I think it lends it to the Chaos and Lace Cartel. That is, the, that is like, our guild um, that we're starting. And so I think I, I, initially naval content didn't, but like, wasn't on my radar of, like, something I really wanted to do. Until they said that the seas were going to be extremely dangerous. And then my brain's like, oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> You're like, high risk, high reward. Yeah, cleric summoner is definitely, it, it's the shaman, I believe. So, and the summoner cleric is the necromancer. Yeah, one no, of I the two. The... I don't know which one is what. <laughs> oh, can't let the pirate animal trainer take care of my dragons. Listen, we can. Oh, I'm not going to be the pirate person. Yeah, she didn't say she I would. Probably, I probably, like I said, he's going to be. The um, gosh, cult of chaos on the ocean. Yeah, cult <laughs> of chaos, of, legion of lace, legion of lace on land. <laughs> uh, but Trinity, do we play? So uh, I, I am tank, and then uh, Annie either plays tank or some type of ranged DPS. Um, uh, I mean, not always. I don't know. I yes, you you, you always no, play. Uh, uh, my druid is not ranged. That's true. Okay, there is the caveat <laughs> there, but typically any other game that we play, you tend to be a ranged DPS or a I mounted know, mounted warrior. I know you I you really I, have to, uh, to do a mounted combat. Revolve my class around is what animals I get to hang out with. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay, uh, the land person. Yep. I mean, I'll go out on the ocean. I just don't want to. <laughs> uh, I might write, write an essay forum post about naval combat on the forums tomorrow. I have a lot of thoughts about it. Awesome. Um, awesome. You, you should uh, you should post a link in our Discord and we'll check it out. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I think that's also something that we're going to start doing a bit more too. It's is perusing the the forum forums to see like what are some popular topics and 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 do some dives on there, and also to kind of broaden like not just obviously things will be grounded around ashes of creation. But also taking some broader questions of, of like we did today of, of talking about you know solo gameplay and also mounts. So that way it's just not limited to that. Um, it was actually kind of funny because that was the thing on on, on Reddit of well how are you guys going to be able to do this every week? Like maybe it should be biweekly. I'm like nah, I can do it every week. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. I mean, to them I say we've been married twelve years and we still talk nonstop. Yeah, I don't think we've ever shut the fuck up since the entire time we've been together. <laughs> Even when we're mad at each other, we still find things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be holding uh, the one, or Annie will be the one holding all the legendary eggs on the server. I know she's really, she really wants to like try to get dragons. Yes. Yeah, like, she's determined. Ken said I should train the horses. I want to, I was saying, I think last stream that I really hope they have like some sort of hippocampus out. Because that'd be very cool. That would be very, very cool. <laughs> and she's going to have all to herself. She's going to be able gonna... to eggs. Yes. That's the thing right. you guys don't understand. Like, Annie is a dragon in real life. She's very solitary. She has a lot of shiny things and uh, she kind of hoards stuff. Wow. I don't really hoard that much stuff. No, you I don't. I'm the hoarder. Stuff. And that's hoard with a D. <laughs> Read horses, horses at first. Wait, where's the train seat? <laughs> that's funny. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, whenever I want. Oh. Uh, no, Daryl, you, you were going to go to bed like two hours ago. 
we're staying up late, but we're going to have three kids probably. I know. I'm going to pay for it so bad. Hours, six or seven hours that are going to want breakfast. She's, I mean, she's a bit more, uh, she's a bit more cuddly than smog, but I can see it. I mean, I'm not corrupt. (laughs) That's true. She's not corrupted by the, um, oh, what is the stone? I can't think of the name of the stone. I know it starts with A. No, smog, smog isn't corrupt by the Arkenstone. It corrupts humans. He's just, it's in his treasure. I guess That's so. not why he's there, though. I don't know. Yeah, Arkansas, like you guys. If you knew anything about dragons, you would know. No, <laughs> you can't say what you thought it was. Did you see Seahorse? Oh, my God. He just loves gold. All dragons love gold. Wow, that's awesome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> my wife makes bacon and eggs, served at my computer. She's the best. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I like seeing that. Yeah, I know um, this guy listens to the podcast with... Uh, with his wife, and also uh, Annie has her own little fan fan club there with them. Wait, what? Sorry. Uh, Skyx, <laughs> I'm listening to the podcast with his wife in uh, your, your fan club. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> That's the, th- the thing, too. It's like, um, obviously, I, I knew, because as a content creator, so you try to figure out, like, well, what's the brand going to be? And, like, should I try to do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, I can't, I can't put a fake face on for people. Like, it's just so hard. So I was like, fuck it. Like, our fans will find us. There will be people who just like listening to us. Honestly, it's just us. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, let's see. The Bergen said, wow, I think I joined after all the AOC focus talk, but it has proven to me I could comfortably hang out here each Friday night after the Golden Feather Tavern. I was going to say, we definitely, like, we wrapped up things probably about, like, a, sometimes we go three hours to like actually talking about stuff but it seems like we kind of wrap things up around 2 30 and uh not by choice it seemed like as soon as everyone started counting uh all, everything just broke loose but honestly right. <laughs> with with the with with the with your hosts and everything and, and us that's one of the confusing things too is that uh, the youtube is tangents of creation but also we're, we're chaos and lace cartel so like chaos is a big part of it and also with the tangents i guess too it's like oh awesome thank you for subbing man Oh, okay. Very cool. <laughs> um, so we are in the Eastern time zone and we typically, we have been starting at 8 30 PM. Uh, so yeah, so we, I guess we've kind of positioned ourselves in a way to be part of that Friday night, um, ashes group. Uh, it would actually be kind of cool if we could position ourselves to be when golden feather is ending, but we, we didn't, that wasn't even a conscious decision to like be behind them. It was more of like, it, it was just to really help us. Um, so we didn't have a sub goal this time. I was just, because it seemed so, so we kind of got, it kind of got a little messed up because we had someone come in and, and they dropped like 30 subs. So like, I was like, okay, it's so the next step up. And then I look and they're, they're all dropped and, and off. Uh, <laughs> so I was trying to rethink of like what to do. I, I will do, I think we'll do the chubby bunny challenge tomorrow. Um, <laughs> no, it's your turn to go to bed. Uh, so yeah, I, th- I think we'll probably do, let's get a green speedo stream. Oh man, I already did the um, I already did the bikini stream. If you guys want to go into the not stay for work uh, part of the Discord, you can see me in the green bikini that I wore. Her. Uh, yeah. for <laughs> um, for for the the stream that I I forget. So we did what was it? I did a pie to the face. I wore one of Annie's bikinis on stream. I ate the world's hottest chip. Those are three challenges I've done so far, right? Um, yeah. yeah, you've only done the three so far. Yeah, so I guess we can do a chubby buddy um, tomorrow. That will be split between the two streams while we're playing Dead by Daylight. Hopefully, no one chokes. The chip was terrible. Um, so there, there's a video of it up on the YouTube. Uh, so the the spice wasn't too bad. Like the the heat of the chip was fine. What killed me was the Im- intense stomach pain that followed after. And I, later on, like, it, like no lie, my stomach was messed up for like two days after that. Um, I know we had to cancel our community night. We had to cancel community night and then oh, fell yeah. off for like a couple of weeks because it just, things kept getting crazy. But um, yeah, like it, it was intense, like super intense stomach pain. Like I swear to God, I could feel where the chip was like through my, like going through my gut the entire time. Um, it, it was, I, there was at one point where it just hurt so bad that I just, I couldn't focus at all. Like I thought, I, I, I thought like, I literally was like, I can't do this. And Annie's like coming over to me, like it's asking me if I want like some rice or something. I was like, just stop talking. Like, I can't talk right now. And I, I remember like, I'm like, please just let it pass. And then all of a sudden, like it just kind of went away. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, 
what? I'll, I'll, let's see. I'll go after the next stop. <laughs> Sarah will stay in the rest of the Oh my God. Do not. What about the shave your beard challenge? No, that one is never happening. I look like a goddamn 13 year old boy if I shave my beard. I don't know. Maybe that's going to be a real special one. That's going to be like a, um, oh man, <laughs> I have. Let's see. Um, I don't even know how much said, And said no ice bucket challenge. Ooh, we could do that. Be... That might be one at some point. Ice bucket challenge. I see Annie hates being cold. Like she hates it so bad. Yeah. I was um, just thinking, not that that's something I want to do. Speaking of subs, one for me. speaking of subs, if you guys want to sub in the next eight seconds, you'll miss ads. Uh, so just throw that out there. there and then we'll, we'll resume. All right, guys, ads are on. So if you guys want to ask any random questions and get the answers for that, no one else can see. 10K subs delete all your characters. Ad. No, that is a terrible. Uh, you guys are giving really bad challenges. I am never doing that. That is not worth. I'm not. Nope. I think we're all sub now. Maybe. I, I have no idea how many subs I have. Um, I can toss the ice bucket. You can toss the ice bucket. That's true. She just, she hates <laughs> cold. Like, so. Um, so you have to try I mean, it. I'll do it for the right price. <laughs> Maybe I'll even wear a white t-shirt. 19 people with 11 subs. That's freaking sweet. 20. Oh, there's 20 on there. Oh, there we go. That's really cool. Guys, I really appreciate all this. It's so, so goddamn fun. Um, okay. Oh, wait. The ad's in progress now. Oh, we weren't, we weren't in ad land yet. I messed up. In ad land. Okay, I think we're in ad land now. Um, I do feel so bad because, like, I know when, when we're going on, like, the, occasionally, like, the ads will go off, I think, when we're in midstream. But that's also why I like putting it up on YouTube and in and, and the podcast, so in case people miss other things. I'll do it for the right. <laughs> so how um I don't know who can't hear. Oh yeah. Yes, I guess you guys can figure out who's subbed and who's not as it drops <laughs> down. No, Jamie, this is a wait. It's winter. Okay, so um <laughs> Oh my god. Funny story. I already told this story, I think, of like when um it, it was like in the middle of winter and like I went outside naked. I was just like showering off in the snow. Like it was just it was um literally Annie, like, one of our middle, girlfriends was there in the middle of the daylight. Yeah, in the middle of the daylight. Yeah, in the middle, middle of the day, I just go out, I'm bathing in the snow, like grabbing it, treating it like soap, just clean myself off. So I'm, 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 I'm cool with cold, man. Like, cold challenges are fun. Like, the more you guys find out, the more, like, a uh, polar bear swim challenge, that would be fun. I've done that. I've, I've done, jumped into uh, yeah, a lake in, like, the middle of uh, January, <laughs> uh, back when we lived in New Hampshire. I used to run into, like, the uh, Hampton Beach over there. They, they In the middle of winter, they, they go run into the the ocean and uh i never did that one but anytime we did go to the ocean like i just walked straight in it was always like that mental challenge of like can i handle it probably a video of, of somewhere there is there is uh that was definitely recorded and i had it but, but that was like back when we had like flip phones uh flip phones so that, that video quality is probably not that great i'm sorry to everyone who had, knows what that story was i had a picture of um jamie head to toe in my lingerie oh in your lingerie the thigh high garters and the heels Oh, oh my so God. good! It was so freaking funny. I don't even remember why you put it on. <laughs> it was just I don't care. I just, dude, I didn't give. I just thought it'd be fucking funny. Oh my God, that's so violent. Has oh, like come about that right and right of the snow behind a snowmobile. I am that home. So All right, like I saw a dragon. And I thought of like I was like, oh, we have the challenge. I'll I'll dress him. <laughs> um, just need to think of funny things. I'm I'm so down to do anything funny. I really don't care. Same, bro, same. It was a Monday. <laughs> Let's see. It was probably on the, I don't know when that was. Yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of crazy different things. That's why we're like, we need to move. Like, at some point, we will probably just have the Chaos and Lace stream. Or the Chaos and Lace podcast and just go off and do all our, talk about our random stuff. All right, guys, we are closing in on midnight our time and we're going to have crazy children up in the next five to six hours. So thank you for coming to the stream. It has been a ton of fun. We already missed you guys already. Uh, so you may be looking at phones. Your phone is at 10%. That's fine. You, I think, I think we're, we're going to fire we're, before you're... I just say, Daryl, we're going we're gonna to put you to bed. Uh, this was a ton of fun. Thank you, everyone, for coming out for all the subs. Um, if you haven't followed and you want to make sure you know that we're going to go live, make sure you follow and get all that good stuff. Um, if you want to listen to us on podcasts, you can find us where all, all the podcast stuff uh like share all that shit on youtube all that cool stuff and really looking forward to hanging out with you guys like like share subscribe bits 
Cheers. Yeah, bets. Cheers. All that good stuff. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for coming out. It does mean it means the world to us to have everyone in here. And um, before I forget, I, you finished Mafia. What do Ma Oh my God, I might be starting another thing. Mafia is one of my favorite franchises. Like I that oh, I fucking love Mafia. It is so goddamn good. Ugh, Jesus, <laughs> I want to go off on a tangent of that now, dude. I love Mafia One. Mafia 2 was okay. I never, I didn't get around to playing Mafia 3, but Mafia 1 was one of my favorite games. I played the shit out of that game, like, so, so, so much. Um, mm -hmm. Because I really like games like uh, Vampire Masquerade. That's why I, when I was playing um, Cyberpunk 2077, like, I was really, really enjoying it because it just reminded me of that kind of, like, that style. Um, anyway, I could talk about that forever. I, we got to get going. Uh, can you get a Discord link? I think if you guys do exclamation Discord, Hell yeah. There we go. Yay. All right. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Are you guys going to keep talking? This, uh, do you have, next Friday. Do you have oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's um, your, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No, I got, oh, yeah, there it is. Yep. I have it all set up. And then, yeah. Yay. If you guys want, you can also go follow Annie. She does really cool builds in Conan Exiles. And also, we stream together uh, most nights at 8 30. Um, so, yeah. We'll see, catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for coming. That's where we'll have the fun podcast someday. Yeah, some <laughs> the, the DGen one will be over there. We'll, we'll share, <laughs> share between the podcast. I know, we gotta figure out how to split that. All right, guys. Have oh my one. god, you guys are killing me in what? Discord. <laughs> ben and Lord just started counting. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bye. On that note, have a good night, guys. Thanks for hanging out. See you guys later. Have a good night. Bye. Normally that's your line. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>